Should right? Americans be required to have ID to vote? Chris, yes or no? So let's start off with open-ended question. Um, Chris and Candace, specifically to you guys. Candace, what is your thoughts, your impression of Chris? You know, because for many years, we watched CNN, and he was the face of CNN, right? Whether he's reporting, whether he's interviewing, whether he's calling out, whether he's doing what he's doing with his colleagues. And also, Chris, open-ended from you, impression of what Candace has done. So Candace, we'll start off with you first. You know, I think my perception as CNN as a network is oh, engages in a lot of propaganda. I think what happens anyways is that when you have a, a corporation that gets very big, you have your angle and you want to hire people that reinforce that angle. So that's just me understanding the humanity of it. And something I think tripped over for a lot of people when Trump was elected. And so my perception of all of the anchors at CNN is that they were just engaged, laser focused on trying to destroy Trump as a man and didn't realize perhaps that in the process you were destroying the Americans who supported him by not understanding, by sort of castigating them all as racist or sexist or homophobes, whatever it was, whatever the thing was. And so I think that was my first introduction to you. I actually developed respect for you, though, when you defended your brother, whether or not I agree with him or what he's done or what, you know, whether he's guilty or not. I, I always will respect somebody that has loyalty to their family. And so I was interested to see what you would do perhaps with a little more freedom and to find out who you are. So I have no biases against you, but I probably didn't like you too much when you were at CNN. <laughs> just wait till you get just wait till you get to know me. You'll have plenty of reason not to like me. <laughs> um, so I have a, a different perspective, right? I have a different perspective on CNN. It, I think it's frustrating for some people that I don't have I don't harbor resentment or ill will. And it's not because I'm a good person. Uh, it's just I don't find it productive. Uh, I don't see CNN that way. You are right about Trump. Trump changed the game. And I mean the word game as an operative phrase. Our politics, our political culture, the coverage of it, the parties, it's all part of a game dynamic uh, that only works to the advantage of the players in the game and not to you. And I think that that is one of the biggest problems that uh, really can change the game is people understanding that it's not about them anymore. Even last night, everybody watched the State of the Union for a take on whether the President of the United States was competent, literally, like in a physical sense, which is a very low bar. And what was he going to say about Trump? Nobody watched for what they were going to say about you or your life or what it's supposed to be about. He didn't even tell us what the State of the Union is because everybody knows the answer. Everybody knows it's in a state of disunion. So I didn't see CNN as a malefactor. I still don't. I think it's one of the strongest organizations uh, in the world when it comes to coverage. Trump changed the game because he took on the media and trashed all the norms. I always say that uh, former President Trump got what he asked for, which was conflict and tension. Was it to destroy him as a man? Certainly, that was never what I'm about, um, which is why he talked to me so often. You know, if we know one thing about the president is that he's not gonna put himself in situations he thinks are bad for him. And he talked to me on a regular basis, off air. He would call on a regular basis to tell me how terrible CNN was um, <laughs> and, and why and, and uh, how I could let that be. But I also think there's one other thing and uh, then I'll answer any questions anybody wants. Uh, it's a mistake to judge the people on the platform all the same way. You look at a platform, uh, you look at a company, you look at CNN, you look at Fox, you look at MSNBC. Then you go and you look at the show. And what is that show about? What it's supposed to be about. Then you look at the person on. Uh, that's the only way to do it. You look at News Nation, where I am now. Uh, Ashley Banfield is not Dan Abrams, is not Chris Cuomo, is not Leland Vittert. They're all different people. They all have uh, different reasons that they do what they do. You can't write them all off by just News Nation. Um, so I appreciate you sitting next to me. Uh, you are whip smart, 
and you have a great ability to communicate message. Uh, and uh, I, I think you have so much power in this dynamic. I don't like the way Forbes uh, uh, identifies you because I don't think that you play to black Americans. I think you play to Americans who have a very certain set of ideals and values. And uh, it's a challenge for you. And I appreciate watching you deal with it. And I probably feel like this side of my face is going to be sore at the end of this <laughs> session today. Um, so I'm happy to be here. I'm open to, I, I'm not in the judgment business. So I'm open to what you say, what he says, he says, he says, what the handsome man says, and taking it each case by case. That's how I do it. And the more we do that, the better we are. I love it. Uh, by the way, I respect both of you guys for agreeing to do this. And it wasn't that tough, just so you guys know. Like, it wasn't a negotiation. Candace is like, let's get a date. And you're like, let's figure it out. And it's fantastic to be able to do that. I think we need more of that in America today where we get to. How many of you guys would like to see more of that where we sit down and have these types of conversations? And uh, we're planning on doing many, many more of these uh, for many years to come. Candace. Just for you guys, before I go into my set of questions with State of the Union, we got a lot of things to go. I want to go through the border. I want to talk about the State of the Union. I want to talk about some of the things that the social credit system that they have in China. Is any of that going to be coming down here? I want to talk about whether Biden's going to be the one being there because a little bit of how he gave the speech yesterday, four more years, four more years, kind of gave you the impression that Newsom and Michelle may not be happening, especially with what Michelle said this last week, saying, I will not be running in 2024. What that means, maybe she's saying... She's only walking right now, and she's only jogging, and her cardio is different. We don't know because you have to really read into this kind of stuff. But before we go into any of that stuff, Candace, is there any question you have for Chris Cuomo? Any question you have from, um, you know, and, and, and a part of the first time I talked to Chris, I'm trying to see we're sizing each other up first time when we were here. Specifically, I wanted to make sure he knew how to curl 60 pound dumbbells because I was a little concerned. <laughs> so I, I said, hey, can you lift these weights Darn, or no? that was gonna be my question. <laughs> <laughs> we have the dumbbells back here. No, but what question do you have for him? Is there anything that you'd wanna ask him? Yeah, I think what I would wanna ask you is just with that time and that distance away from the network, what is your actual perception of the people that follow Trump, the people that believe in Trump, the American people that support him and want to see him back in the office? Like, what do you actually believe about those individuals? Uh, one, that you don't have one individual, right? You have different groups of people who support, uh, whether it's Trump, whether it's any alternative to the left, right? You, you, uh, you're going to have different buckets of people. Uh, so. Did Hillary Clinton make a mistake calling Trump supporters deplorables? Of course, of course. That's easy. Did she mean it the way that it came out? Yes, Probably. of course. I, I don't know. That's easy. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, and I know this much. I know she says no, but you don't have to care about her answer. Uh, but that's politics and that's media. Did Kellyanne Conway mean what was ascribed to her when she said alternative facts? No. It's not, this is your reality, this is my reality. Uh, what time is it right now? That's a fact. What's the temperature? That's a fact. How many people are on this stage? That's a fact. You say the only thing that matters is what time it is. I say it actually matters more what the temperature is. I'm using an alternative fact to make a different argument. It's not different realities. That's what she meant. Did the media give her the benefit of that? Hell no. Why? Hate her. Wanted to beat her down. Kellyanne's been a friend of mine for over 30 years. So I understand this. That's the way it gets played. Clinton made a mistake. Clinton made a mistake. I had a very strong feeling that Donald Trump was going to be president of the United States in 2015 and 2016. Why? The rallies and the truth of the grievance and the disaffection that he became a proxy for. I often, not just because it's alliterative, but I often refer to Trump as an agent of animus, as an agent of grievance, that there is a big group of this country that has very legitimate, if different, concerns, whether it's values-based, economic-based, uh, what we're now calling democracy, but is really just about having uh, honest brokers that you give your power to, right, to lead you. 
um, I often say I just wish you had picked a better agent uh, because the grievances are very legitimate. And it was a mistake to understate them. It was a mistake in any situation, as we both know. It is always a mistake to discount how somebody feels when they're in pain or when they're scared or when they're angry. Uh, the worst thing that you can do as a parent, I'm sure, well, you're, you're just getting into the game, but listen to the ghost of Christmas future for you with, with, the, with the kids. When your kids are upset and you look at them and you say, you know, you really shouldn't feel like that. You should, that's going south immediately. Works great with spouses also, uh, by the way. Um, so in politics, you don't blame people for how they feel, right? My father used to joke and say, nobody's ever gonna say to you, hey, you don't like your taxes? Make more money. Be more valuable to the economy and you won't have to worry about what you pay as much. <laughs> You're not getting their vote, I promise you that. So um, I think that the mistake that they made was not speaking to the people that Trump wound up representing. Instead, they just m decided to blame them for their feelings and say, you, you're an idiot to vote for Trump. So instead of talking to me about why I'm voting for Trump and what worries me, you're telling me I'm stupid to feel the way I feel? I'll see you at the polls. That was the mistake. I would argue they're still making that mistake. Last night's speech, was a very low bar as we were talking before. I don't know, you know, if, if you're my opponent, if somebody had asked me if we were in like a debate setting, first of all, I wouldn't have agreed, all right? Because I don't need another beating uh, for, for, for no good reason. And you're gonna be much better at that than I am. But I would set a very high bar for Candace Owens. I'm telling you that right now. I would be like, you know, she better beat me on every point, 10 out of 10, otherwise she's had a bad night. I would not say, I hope that she doesn't trip walking up onto the stage and not remember her name uh, for the next, you know, you set a low bar like that for the president, you're asking for him to get over it. And the bar that was set was, gee, I hope Biden doesn't stroke out during the speech tonight. Um, okay, he didn't stroke out. What a great night for the president. I mean, this is, this is really poison uh, for us as a people. And you should always have high expectations, right? I mean, again, Forget politics. What do you say with your kid? Hey, I hope you pass today. <laughs> you know, unless it's a driving test, you're really hoping for a little bit better than that, right? But Chris, do you, um, do you, do you regret some of the language that you used in talking to Trump supporters? Because I'm willing, Me personally? Yeah. No, because I didn't talk to supporters that way. Um, again, you get blamed for the outlet. You get blamed for who's around you. You get blamed for what happens. Like there's a clip that flies around the internet of one of my former colleagues saying why he didn't want anybody on the show or on CNN who didn't feel certain ways about uh, vaccination. And I am in the split screen listening to him like this, which is like my resting face, right? Which is just like general dyspeptic, you know? Like I have indigestion. And it goes around as a clip as if that's how I feel because I'm, I'm on the screen at that time. It's not how I felt. It's not what I ever said. Uh, I never said you're stupid to vote for Trump. I said what I will say, which is I wish you had a better agent for your feelings and for you what you want to happen. Um, and I feel like that about both choices you're faced with right now. And I am actually uh, encouraged by the fact that better than two out of three of you don't like your choices. I like that. I like that you're getting it that this system has failed you. When Trump and Biden is the best that America can do, we're not living up to our potential. And I think that there are things that need to change that would make it better. What do I regret? And Patrick and I have talked about this, the guys and I have talked about this. It's really hard to have a huge uh, screw up, failure, whatever in your life and come away with it not saying next time I'll do it differently because there is never a universe in which any of my people, uh, my brother, obviously, but the family that I choose in my life, that I'm not there for them. There is no scenario where that happens. And I'm only half as dumb as I look. It's not like I didn't think that my brother being in trouble wasn't gonna get on me some way, um, but I would never not be there for him. And so I can't say I would do it differently. I just wish that I had 
been smarter about understanding how bad it was going to get for me. In terms of how I did the job, you know, you'd always like a second chance that you do, you know, when you do things in life. Um, but that's not the way life works. You only try to correct it going forwards. You know, at CNN, nobody had people from both sides as much as I did on my show. It's not even a close call. And it's because I've always had the same feeling. One, these people are not my enemies, okay? I had no problem walking into his house with this phalanx of, uh, you know, capable knights that he has here. <laughs> and when people heard that I was going on his podcast the first time, they were like, boy, you really do hate yourself, huh? This is, uh, this is, this is the beat. And I was like, this is going to be fine. These guys don't know me and they don't know what I'm about, and they're judging me by being on CNN, which I don't think is fair about the outlet, but certainly is not fair about me. So, do I wish I had said more early on? You know, this guy's going to win, by the way. This guy's going to win. I've never seen people behind someone like this before. I've never been to rallies like that before for anyone. Obama didn't even have rallies like that. Um, yeah, but it's easy to feel confident about it after it happened, you know? Um, but... We're not, you know, the, my business doesn't work where when you say something, I say, Candace, uh, that's not the right way to put it the way you just put it. That's not the way the media works. You don't do that to your own um, when you broadcast. Now, you can say you don't like that, you do like that. But you can search all day long, and he's got great people who do it. You're not going to find me saying people who vote for Trump are bad people. Uh, that they're deplorables, that they're stupid, that you're stupid to feel this way, uh, that you're wrong to care about what you talk to your kids. I want to make sure it's very clear so everybody understands it. After last time you were on the podcast, the world now knows you're voting for Trump. 100%. I mean, I, we, we, 100%. We, listen, I saw it because when, and, and, <clears throat> there's and a better I'll, chance of me eating my own hand, by the way. <laughs> I just want you to know. So, so here's a question I got for you. I want to follow yes. up with this because you and I, I think it's important to kind of see how you respond to this. When I asked the question from your last time when you were here, you were, you were like, I said, so based on what you're saying, it sounds like you're open to the idea. And you were like, well, open, yes, and you kind of left it open, right? Yeah. Then within two hours, you're trending on Twitter, and you're like, what the hell just happened here? And the trending topic was, Cuomo is voting for Trump. Yes. So then all your friends came after Great you day. saying how, so it was a wonderful, <laughs> tell us about that day and what's changed since, did the mob get you to go back to Biden? So what, what happened with that, uh, the power people that called you? Did they bully you? What happened? <laughs> this well, was, a, first of all, nobody bullies me. This, it was a nice exercise. We're here, though. we'll protect you if they Thank do that. Thank you, too. I need it. Yeah. It was an, I, I need the protection from the lawsuits that result when I protect <laughs> myself. Um, it was a nice exercise in what's wrong. OK. Um, and look, you've been in the you've been in the same position. Uh, here's what happened. It is not my job to tell you who to vote for. I've never done that. Um, it's really not my job to tell you who I would vote for, although you know what? I've been reconsidering what transparency in the media really means and what should be involved and involved with it. And people probably should uh, say, I told you, he fact checks you in like <laughs> real time. No, no. So, Siri doesn't believe you. So I know. It's like Siri, <laughs> like he's, he's got chat GPT on my head. You know, it's like no, everybody's no, it's, got. But here, here's what happened. Thank you very much. Welcome. Here's what happened. I don't tell you who to vote for. I shouldn't. Should you be open to voting for Trump? Of course. Figure out what is in your bet. Be selfish. What is best for you, for your family, for your community, for what you care about? That's it. Don't think party. The party is not there for you. You don't even know what the party's about. I say it to Democrats too. What are you about? Except the GOP is evil. You've allowed this to become a reductive battle of where it's, does he have dementia? Is this guy really demented? So it's madman or dead man. That's your choice. And you're okay with that. So be open. All voters should be open. Am I open? No. I'm not as open as you. Why? Because I have my own feelings for me and my own judgment. And as I said that day, next part of the problem, context. There is no context. There are only gotchas. So I said, if the former president is betting on my vote to get back in, he's going to have a bad day. That part doesn't get picked up. Why? Not helpful to the media who want to frame me as a changed man because I've gone bad on the media because of what happened to my brother. It's all BS but it works. 
And so they attacked me. They attacked me for coming on here. They're going to crush me for sitting down and having a conversation with Tucker Carlson. And that is all part of the problem. The problem is, this morning, I'm talking to people about this, about you. You did very well in the analysis, by the way. I had to keep asking different people. How do you feel about Candace Owen? I, I couldn't, I was looking for some, you know, some ammo. I got none. And they would say, you know, I don't have a lot of conversations about this because, you know, people are so divided. That's the problem. Vinny and I were just talking about it. We used to have conversations about this all the time. You didn't think that I was a bad person if I said that I owned a gun, unless I said I was going to take it and come to your house because I was mad at you. Then you had a problem with me. Now, somebody's evil because they believe differently than you. I'm telling you that's not a natural inclination. That has been foisted upon you by the people in power who benefit from the division. It only works for the parties. It doesn't work for you. A shrinking electorate works for the parties. It doesn't work for you. Anger and division works for the parties. It is so much easier for Candace, me to what do you beat think? Candace what do you by think showing that she's saying? wrong than showing that I'm better. What do you think about what he's saying? I mean, <laughs> I, everything he's saying sounds good. It's just not the Cuomo I remember on CNN. So I'm always hopful that people in I the retrospect... I think it's the CNN you don't I remember think, no, when Cuomo I, I, was on I always it. just wish that people in the retrospect, because... Everybody understands humanity. Everybody understands change. Everybody understands that circumstances makes you see things differently. You know, I remember CNN and you and your brother outside of CNN being really harsh on Trump supporters. And I don't mind that you've distanced yourself from that in a bit, but I think people would appreciate, you know, acknowledging that that period of time definitely did happen. And then what I would say is, you know, you, you guys, the network also brought us the Me Too movement. And then, like, in the end, your brother got bit by the same bullet that you guys were pretty much throwing at everybody else, which is like, a woman makes an allegation, it's got to be accepted, and a man's life has to be ruined. And so I just, I think that people watching it, are, are watching right now, are just going to be like, dude, come on. You know, but I'm not an on, apologist from the outlet. I'm not, I only control what I say. And you said a lot. Uh, you can't name one thing that I, gotta I be, said. I got to be honest, outside of the clips that circulate, I, I was not the number one CNN watcher, but I do know <laughs> that you're going to live by whatever you're saying right now because if I can tell you one thing about Trump supporters, they're good on finding the clips and putting it side by side. They were going to have you in 2016 saying something, and then they're going to have you right here saying, I've never said that. You can do it, but so, just if you but get, if, it got to be right about ever, the clip. If you can ever look backwards and say, I have no regrets, nothing could change, I was great, I just question your sincerity. Because I, I, I have regrets and changes about right. every chapter of my life. And so to hear you say that you have none. But that's not what I said. Which well, is, you, of you, course, you part of the problem. You said a lot of words to say, I never said anything on the network. I'm, things are being attributed to me that I never did. That's pretty much that's what also, your answer was, But that's right? also the truth. Okay. I don't, I don't like take... Like I said, the Trump supporters are fast. Before we get up from this table, they're going to have something you said next to you saying that. I'm just telling you. That's why Listen. I always try to be honest. The, the better chances, the better chances, and again, I'm not new to this, Okay. And I understand the game. And sometimes it's entertaining. Sometimes it's uh, ruinous to getting anywhere that could be deemed progress, but that's not really the point. The point is to get paid. The point is to get a following. The point is to stoke answer, uh, anger. And I don't think Trump voters are a monolith. I think they're being forced to be a monolith. I live in a county that's Trumpy, in a village that's Trumpy. I'm a fisherman and I'm a fighter. And most of the guys that I'm with are Trump supporters, okay? So I understand it. I understand it. And I don't believe in the color of the collar. Uh, I believe in where people's values are. It doesn't matter if you wear a tie or you wear a overalls, uh, a set of overalls. It's about what's in your head and what's in your heart. You can find whatever you want, but what's going to happen most likely is that you're going to take a clip that somebody put together for you online that is manipulated, and it will suit an agenda, and you will go with it, and you'll play gotcha. And I just don't, you do it, knock yourself out. I just don't think it gets you to a better place. Okay, if you have no regrets, and you think that your I record was perfect. I always have regrets. You, I always have regrets. the exact opposite. No, I'm saying this. 
I don't have any regrets about helping my brother. I don't know what I would have done differently. No, not about I'm that. saying Just in terms of my time at CNN. The network and, and, you know, I don't control what a network does. I don't control I what News Nation does. I said your time at the network. Your time at the network. I said, in answer to the question, that you do I open? wish I had said things differently that would have been more reflective of a reality I saw coming? Yes, but I wasn't in the business of demonizing people for voting one person or another. I will never apologize for pointing out when a politician or a person in power goes out of their way to not tell the truth, to divide, and to manipulate. The answer is, yeah, but you got to do it to both sides. Yes, you're right, you have to do it to both sides. But it doesn't mean that it's coming at you the same way from both sides. What Hillary said about the Trump people was stupid for her to say, and it, she really paid a price for it. But to say that everything is equal, that's a false parody. And it doesn't help people. So we got, we got two and a half hours here together, oh. a left, two hours and 20 minutes left. I got a lot of other topics to talk about. One of the things I'd like to get to eventually today is the concept of, uh, of establishment versus non-establishment. We don't need to do that right now. We can get right into the topic of uh, the State of the Union. Uh, Candace, your thoughts. Um, State of the Union yesterday. You know, Joe Biden, I think uh, they were late. I don't know how long they were 26 late. 26 minutes till he touched the mic. 26 minutes. 26 they, minutes till he, till he got touched to the podium. Him. Okay, so Vinny's following the numbers. He was tracking because Vinny wanted, <laughs> Vinny couldn't wait for it. He's like, can we start earlier? Yeah. So 26 minutes. I think he coughed 27 times. 27. I don't know how many times he coughed. He talked about his, his uh, <laughs> Trump 13 times. And, but, uh, you know, that's, there's a lot of different statistics that we can get into. Candace, your thoughts on yesterday's State of the Union speech? <laughs> you know, I'm happy he made it through the end. The bar has been very low, and he didn't die. <laughs> so, uh, I think my perception always is that in those 26 minutes, they're giving him an inje injection of adrenaline in the butt and hoping he stays alive. And he Adderall. did. Uh, yeah, they're giving him something, obviously, just to get him through it, which is really sad. And I think that all of it feels <laughs> tremendously performative. So you can go over aspects, you can save this person, there's mm -hmm. one. At the end of the day, the American people are very awake to what's happening on both sides of the aisle. People are awake. This is why they're distancing themselves from the mainstream networks. And, and to, to give a speech about it, even call, titling it a state of the union, as you said accurately, it's a state of disunion. And it, you, you get angry. You get angry at it. You, no matter what clip you take out of it, no matter what discussion you want to have, the American people know that we are not being led by the President of the United States. We know that he does not have the mental faculties to lead, and therefore there must exist a shadow government, right? <laughs> and we want to know who that shadow government is. Why don't you stand up and give a speech for a couple of hours and tell us about your incentives and tell us about what we're doing in Ukraine, what we're doing overseas? Because this puppet presidency is nothing short of infuriating for the public to have to sit here and watch. Tom, Tom. I, I agree. I felt like he was propped up, and I think that State of the Union address will be known for the tone that he delivered, but not for any messages he delivered. Um, you know, you, you go back and you, you look at Obama. Obama did the State of the Union, and we all understood there were 30 million people that needed health care, and this is my plan. Now, we would later find out it's the most inflationary, you know, health care act in the history of mankind. But we knew that he was all about, let's get 30 million people health care coverage. So there was something to it. In last night's speech, he was angry. He was upset. He was driving. I think people remember the tone. But you go two weeks from now, two seconds from now, and ask people, what did he say? What was the thrust for America? What was something that's going to change? And it's like, I don't know. But he didn't fall down. <laughs> Vinny. Yeah, well, you nailed it, Chris. New York Post, the front page says, he's alive. <laughs> like, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the message, but I, I it's just... It's like an Easter message. Yeah, yeah. no, it's just... I, <laughs> well, well, and he is risen, but it's basically yeah, the same thing. The second, <laughs> he is risen. The, yeah, the... By the way, you got to give him credit. That may be Tom's best joke so far. So far. <laughs> yes or no? Tom's the best one. Go ahead, Vinny. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> easy does it, Prince. It was obvious. I mean, and we've been seeing this for, for almost four years now. You, every time you hear Biden speak, it's, hey, I'm going to get in trouble. They're gonna, they won't let me do this. They don't. It'd be great to find out who's the, uh, the they. Tony Blinken, if you guys saw when they cut to him, Tony Blinken looked like he was going to crap in his pants because they're on edge because God knows what's going to happen. But I think there's definitely somebody else. And this is, this is a big wake-up call for America. 
you know that this president isn't calling zero shots, any shots, okay? And the reason the swamp hated Trump, he was making the decisions. You never heard Trump say, hey, they told me or this. It was, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for us, and that's why everybody went after him, because he wasn't answering to anybody. And I think we finally now know that cocaine that was lost in the White House, who was using it, and it was Hunter and Joe Biden at the same time. Allegedly. 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 That's according to you. Nobody else is saying it, but maybe you have some context we don't know. know about. Adam. Well, this might be controversial, but given what we've all said about Joe Biden, I thought he crushed it. Now... Hear me out. Hear me out, because I think Chris Cuomo is absolutely right. When you set the bar so low, when you set the bar so low for the president, whoever it is, and they just don't die on stage, you have to give them an A. This is the real There you go. He's so alive. Exactly. It's an Easter So message. you saw in the, in the Wall Street Journal, Peggy Noonan basically said, there's some, still some fight in, in the old guys. They'll left. So when you... When you basically set the bar so low, as Chris Cuomo said, and you said that like he can't tie his shoes and can't tie two sentences together when he just delivers a very average speech that was somewhat energetic and you're expecting an F and he does a C, everyone's going to be like, well, it was, it was actually a B. And like, that's the whole thing. I mean, we have a bet right now whether he's actually going to be the nominee. And I'm just <laughs> following the Henry Kissinger model of Real politic. I'm just looking at what's in front of me, and the guy's gonna be the nominee, like it or not. No, and you're talking to somebody that has never voted for a Republican president in his life, and I'm truly, truly considering Trump at this point. But I think that just goes to show not so much Biden, where this Democratic Party has gone. My dad was a JFK guy, Bill Clinton, not a Hillary guy, Bill Clinton. <laughs> but I think most Democrats, as Dave Rubin has basically called me, and he's taken credit for like where I'm at now, I think a lot of common sense, independent, liberal, uh, you know, Democrat with the lowercase d are just like, yeah, I wasn't a Trump guy, you know, I'm not a fan of the, of, of, of some of the rhetoric he uses, but whatever's going on the left of me over here, this wokeness, this DEI, the ESG, like Cuomo and I are pretty similar, like we're dudes, we like sports, we like women, we like football, like Whatever's going on in the Democratic left trans situation, I'm just like, yeah, I'll just take the, I'll take the Trump guy with the plane and the hot chick. And that's kind of where I'm at now. Wait, can I also add the, the contrast, by the way, and I think that, that this is actually relevant, but you also have to recognize that Tucker just went over and interviewed Vladimir Putin. And this is significant because then you saw what it looks like when somebody not only has the mental faculty, I mean, irrespective of what you thought about the interview, mm -hmm. you cannot... You, you are forced to acknowledge that he's an incredibly smart person. I mean, he started in eighth, the 8th century. Yep. <laughs> Forget, I mean, I, I don't even think Tucker thought he was being trolled, right? It's just, well, in 8th century, and, and he's, he's going through the entire history of Russia, starting from the 8th century, right? And truly, Biden couldn't have started from yesterday at 8 p.m. <laughs> and recounted what he had done. So there's also this contrast that's playing out. It's a, but it's a very good point you're making because as a leader of a nation, you want somebody to be able to impose themselves. He gave a clinic and taught the world Russian history. Right. If you really think about right. it. Hey, he, this is what we're all about. I know I gave you two hours. I'm going to teach the world why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. This is the reason, right? And you can love him, you can hate him, you cannot criticize him for his agenda that he came in to do. And we did not see that yesterday. Correct. And, and by the way, how about yourself? What did you think about it? I think that it is not good that you're using Vladimir Putin as some type of positive attribute uh, metaphor for a leader. That's not, okay? that's not what I did at all. Well, you're, just, just you're, for saying you're, that you, people you're saying, have just well, seen, he's smart. He is he's smart. smart. So you, why would you not acknowledge someone smart? You, what does that do? Does that make me a Putin supporter? Cause I, you're clearly smart. No, if you but, can sit down and unpack Russian history right, but from the, the eighth point? century, what do you mean? What the point, the point, the point is point? to say that the entire world can now see this contrast of a man who can't remember what happened two hours ago, who still mm -hmm. thinks that his son is alive, sadly, and often brings up his son as if that's he's still alive. True. That's not true. You don't need. See, look. What you, is not you, true, Chris? Actually, say he does what is not, not true. Think, you're really going to say that Joe Biden believes that his son Bo is alive? He has. Uh, he has done that on camera. He has said. He has mis. 
spoken as an old man that is talking about That's something that problem. hurts him. Listen to you. No, Chrissy, Chris, listen, Chris, Chris. Listen, again. There's no reason to do, there's no reason look, to do this. You're doing so great. I don't, I'm not going to let you do this to yourself. Like, listen. what? No, seriously, 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 seriously. There's no reason to do it. There's no reason to do it. Obviously, Vladimir Putin is intelligent. There's no reason, doesn't make you anything to acknowledge the fact that any person that can for an hour straight unpack the history of their country leading, starting from the eighth century, right. has their mental faculties about them. Okay. That that is the only thing Here's that the I thing. had made and I said that that contrast is First, now playing out in the American people's mind of, wow, yes. okay, I don't care what I think about Vladimir Putin or Russia, right? But the fact that they have a leader who can speak in this manner, okay. right? Who is able to remember these things and to communicate in this manner makes us aware of how much we are not getting out of our own leaders. That is a very valid point. Okay, I get it. I hear you. And I completely disagree, okay? Because again, picking a metric of what's the guy's IQ is not enough for me. First of all, he did not give you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because it's what do you do with your intelligence? You think he gave you an accurate recitation of Russian history starting in the 8th century, because Candace just said so. She's wrong, and you're wrong, okay? He did not give you an accurate recitation. He gave you a KGB doctored look at why it's okay that he wants to reestablish the Soviet Union. That's what he gave. Oh, stop and it. it. Listen. Listen, Stop I'm not it. here to play Russia good, Russia bad, okay? Russia has a if, smaller GDP than California. He's so not, what? Just, like, it, it, so it, what? They're it, also are, invading a country right now just for avarice. Americans are, are economically Look, so unintelligible I, that they are going to believe what I'm that saying the threat is, that we are facing today is Russia trying to reestablish. So this is like Cold War propaganda. We got we to move on from that, okay? But it's it, just it, as real this now is, this as it was the 1960s. then. And remember, in America, these people are allowed to be here right now doing things they could never do in Russia. Never. Nobody can speak out against Putin. He is at over 75% in popularity polls because people know what happens if you answer differently. They make no money. They have no press freedoms. When they try to exercise themselves even on the internet, it's starting to they sound get like chased. America today. Because January sixers <laughs> well, are locked and that up is, for and a that long is thing. You locked to, up grandmas for expressing their opinions. That is something opinions. to be concerned about. You are saying that, is that something if you to speak, be concerned about. That is correct. not admired, of press, you're but sitting used here, as a point of fear. They wanted to arrest Tucker Carlson for going over to speak to a leader of a country that we are allegedly not at listen, war with. I, listen. So you're you're also describing America while you are telling us. I am us, not describing America. Yeah, I'm it, describing what America should not be. So be careful about putting up a model of what you think Nobody's, has some value. Nobody said there That's was a model. We just said that it's That's very obvious that Putin can complete a sentence and that Biden can't. Yeah, and he I'm can not, complete I, a I, sentence. This, he can this, also this likely murder vibe. his opponents. And that's a function of his intelligence also because it's not guided by any sense of morality. And that matters too. And Tucker Why making the decision. Gonzalo Lira was just killed by Zelensky. He, He's a thug. We shouldn't be supporting listen, Ukraine at all, not a look, single dollar. E even if that were true, which neither of us know whether it is, then that's a policy argument. Have the policy argument. The idea of good and evil, right and wrong, cheapens it. It cheapens it. But you and just did that. You no, just, you, I'm not you, doing you just got it. I'm doing the by the opposite. Fact I'm not I triggered. That, what are you, 19? Putin, Are you using 19 year old woke language now that I'm triggered? Okay, are you I'm just, not triggered. You're, I got my legs crossed. It means I'm comfortable. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, well, you just seemed a little triggered. You like, well, I don't like setting up Putin as triggered. a model. I, I didn't. Nobody here, everyone is listening to what I said, and I'm going to not just double down, I'm going to triple down, quadruple down on the fact that it's very obvious to the American people yes. that our leaders are extremely lackluster, Agreed. and that has been made even more Agreed. abundantly I said the same. clear after having watched Tucker Carlson sit across from Vladimir Putin, which was heroic on his part, because we are tired of being propagandized. We are tired of people pretending, if you live in Russia, there's gonna be so much propaganda. There's so much propaganda here. I agree. Okay, we are suffering from the exact same things I agree. that you accuse Vladimir Putin of doing. I agree. Locking up people's opponents, right? I uh, agree. I don't agree with locking up their up, opponents. FBI agents showing up on American people's doorsteps because they attended a rally on January 6th. Three of my friends had FBI agents, they didn't even step foot in the Capitol, okay? Had FBI agents show up because they were, they wanted any person that even showed up to hear Trump speak on January 6th mm -hmm. to feel threatened 
by that because the establishment said that you weren't allowed to support Donald Trump, okay? So I'm gonna speak to how the public is feeling right now. And we are very aware of the fact that Joe Biden could potentially be dead right now, okay? We don't even know, like he, he can barely make it through a sentence. And when we see somebody you do like know Vladimir that Joe Putin, Biden is who is not able dead, right? to, is what? You do know that Joe Biden's yeah, not dead. Cheek. And you do know that he that wasn't was shot up with something No, I actually do. I actually, he went out there. I actually do believe he was shot I, up I with adrenaline before come he goes. Come on. I think, what do you mean, come on? JFK come on. used to do that. Come on. So it's like, at, Listen, he, they it, obviously the truth are giving him drugs before The truth is enough. And I'll tell you why it becomes problematic, okay? it Look. It's a half joke. They shot Biden up with something it's last night. It's not a half night. joke. I but really believe what, that. I want here's to be what clear. happens. Well, look, if you really believe that, yes. that's fine. It would be just nice to have a basis for it. But yeah, yeah he's going to take a drug test. Okay. Look, here's what here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going here's here's what's going to happen. Okay. Just trust me on this because you've already seen it. You you're going to know that it's already true. You are allowing for a BS standard of appraisal. So now... Intelligent is a BS standard. It's not intelligent. It's the shooting up part. So now they'll start showing clips of Trump where it seems that he's not speaking fluidly. And they'll talk about whether he's on drugs. And they then did that already. They will, but, but, that's what you, but that's what you enable with this. I'm saying just stick with the truth. Are our leaders performing the way we need them to be? Come on, it's a rhetorical question. No. You had in Congress last night, um, I forget who smacked me with this stat, but it was a great one. 14% popularity for members of Congress, right? That yeah. sounds about right. It's somewhere between 12% and 20%, depending on the poll. 94% re-election rate. How do you have such low popularity and such high re-election rate? Because the game is rigged. That's why. Now, the truth is enough, okay? Just stick with the truth. The problem is when you get into these situations of comparing a guy who's just a bad guy with what you want in your own leadership, I don't think it sends you to the right the place. The truth is that Vladimir Putin was able to communicate in a way that was coherent. Would you want Vladimir it's, Putin it, to is, be this your is president? Such a, this is such a fine statement. Would you want Vladimir Putin to be your president? That's not what I said. I'm asking you a question. That's not what I said. I'm asking no, you a question. No, but you're asking the question because you still cannot deal with the fact that I yes. have accurately described Vladimir Putin as coherent. He is. There's no question he's coherent. I'm Do just saying. Do you think he's smart? I think he's an intelligent man, yes. Uh, that's all I said. Oh my God, we got there, we can move on. No, Good, listen. oh my God, we got there, no. it's just, that's all I said, right? But okay, it's cool. about why you're using okay. him as an instruction. Because I have sat across from serial killers that are intelligent men. Uh, because I, I don't I, want them deciding my taxes. Did I say that I wanted Vladimir Putin to decide my but taxes? Why, but why hold sure him up as an example? Of, uh, why uh, hold him up as an example? Because we are talking about it's the like American It's like when Trump said Duterte mindset. is a tough guy. Everyone Why was able to that? comprehend this, so I'm going to restate it one more time. One more time. Okay? We are talking about the State of the Union. I am talking about the mindset of yes. Americans that understand this is all very performative and the insult yes. to have him up there as if he is the leader of our nation, especially following the interview that we all watched in which Vladimir Putin first and foremost made it clear that it's, he doesn't I hear view it. our leaders as even leading the country. He views them all as puppets and that he I deals, hear it, but he you're deals still with the CIA. using Putin as a positive comparison okay, so is, to who is, we have. We, I mean, I don't know what I'm missing in terms of this, the logic. This is how I take you, it. You're, you're, uh, you're uh, Chris, I'm, I'm, this is how I take it from the outside. Uh, I take it as I want to know everybody's leader on how they are, how formidable they are, yes. and can mine go up against that leader? If Putin and Biden are in a negotiation table, we're going to lose. Yeah, a that's, that's, a, that's all I'm thinking about. So for me... I, I think about somebody being able to sit up against them to say, hey, you got to knock it off with this Ukraine stuff. By the way, let's process this in a different way. We had, uh, 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 I don't know who I was having this conversation with. It's like, well, you know what? What do you think about this? And what do you think about that? I said, listen, we have four years of data, pure data of what happened under Trump. They can't play that same game as, aren't you afraid that he has access to the button? He's actually one of the 46 people ever who had access to the button and never used it, and there was no wars, right? For four years, it was peaceful. We didn't have no Ukraine, nothing, Afghanistan, nothing going on, no Israel, Hamas, nothing going on, right? This guy's here, he's got access to everything for three years. 
What do we have going on? What we did with Afghanistan, they're wearing our uniform now. What happened with Ukraine and Russia? What happened with Israel and Hamas? According to pure data, one doesn't know how to sit across another alpha and say, check yourself, stop, you cannot behave like this again. That's purely how I process the difference between Putin and Biden. I don't sit there and look at Biden and say, man, I, I can't wait for this guy to go into the boardroom. He's going to crush it in the boardroom behind closed doors negotiating. I say, please don't keep it uh, behind closed doors. I want to see exactly how he's going to be negotiated. He doesn't give you that kind of a confidence. By the way, State of the Union, for the people that are watching, if, if we were to kind of break it down on what were some of the things that were discussed, this is kind of what I took away from it. I'm curious to know what you guys think about purely issues. Uh, he talked about abortion, and he looked at the Supreme Court, and he's preaching at them. And did you guys notice how they did, they were so, it's as if, is it 5-4 or is it 6-3? Six, 6-3 three, six, three. Six, six, three is what it is. Right. But they were fully unified against the president. Mm -hmm. No, brother, mm -hmm. we're on the same page here. We're not breaking. Not one Supreme Court went like this. Who voted for Roe v. Wade, which tells you, hey, we are unified. The Supreme Court was unified against the president. That was a very interesting dynamic for me to see yesterday. So he went after Roe v. Wade, get it? He's given that messaging, women, and the red wave we were expecting last year didn't happen. He may be right in that area, but he is going after them. Next. Then he talked about the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, supporting the next big war, which is what? Ukraine. Hey, you know, uh, uh, what makes you think this is where he's going to stop? And what if after Ukraine, you think he's going to stop there? And, you know, maybe he's alluding to the fact that he's going to go after Poland or whatever else is going to be the next thing he's going to do. And he's getting more of these guys to give more money, $60 billion to Ukraine. And then he's saying if the border really matters, then do something about it. Yet out of the $118 billion, you call the border bill, only 20 of it, 15, 16, 17 percent of it, is going to the border and the other money is going to Ukraine. So you care more about the Ukrainian border than the U.S. border. While we're getting how many people that have already come here, give or take 10 million people. And, and we saw what Egypt did to their wall and that beautiful wall they built in Egypt and Israel. And we even broke down the math on what it was and how much yeah. it would cost for us to build it. We broke it down to... $4.8 billion, and Correct. we even said America likes to overpay $20 billion. You can build the same exact type of a ball wall to protect the southern border. Right We're not having that kind of conversation. Yeah, wonderful wall these guys built there. In Egypt. And then the other thing that he talked about is somehow defending transgenders. I thought I was confusing. You know how small of a community that is to talk about that? And last but not least, I mean, obviously, there's other issues. One of the things that was so confusing was this. Do you know how much billionaires pay in taxes? And everybody's saying their numbers. He says, it's actually, I think it's at 8.2 or 8.3%, whatever number he said. He says, do you know what would happen if we can tax billionaires? 25%. That would allow us to get $500 billion the next 10 years. Imagine that. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, you print a couple trillion and spend it like this. What makes you think I want you taking money away from capitalists? First, show me. Here's how I would agree to that, by the way. Why don't you take the $34 trillion to $25 trillion, Then we'll agree to something like that. But if you don't even know how to control your spending, who the hell are you to tell us how we should control our spending? It's almost a little bit offensive to ask us to be able to do that. Right. Show us you know how to manage your finances. And so I, 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 was, I was a little bit annoyed by that. However, however, if you do think about it, what was that really about last night? To me, my interpretation, I may be wrong, call it out, I'm comfortable with it. My interpretation of last night was the fact that it was a, it was a tryout. It was almost like a, hey, Democrats, trust me, I'm your guy. Like, oh, this guy's mm -hmm. got it, and he's going to do it. So, and and I, this is a part where I'll agree with uh, Adam. I actually think he did better than people thought he was going to do because, again, the bar is so low. We're kind of like, okay, he stayed it for an hour. By the way, just so you guys know, record for the most – Longest uh, uh, State of the Union, Clinton has the record for an hour and 28 minutes and 50, uh, 49 seconds. Nixon did the shortest in 29 minutes, 28 minutes. Oh. He came in, he's, he's like, I couldn't wait I to get out, guys. Out. Hi, bye, <laughs> out, right? I am not <laughs> That's a crook. That's what we're doing. But so, so to me, it was more of that. And then, so at the end, there's a scene where you're looking at uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi, and you're almost seeing tears in her eyes. I don't know if you saw that or not. <laughs> and I'm not being sarcastic. I'm actually looking at her and saying, and she kept saying, four more years, four more years, four more years. Republicans, let me kind of give you a little bit 
something for you guys to be thinking about from my perspective. Why are you upset? You should be very happy that it's not Newsom or Michelle Obama. You should be, you should be rooting for him right now. Republicans behind closed doors should do what the Democrats did, and they're like, no, we want Trump to run when they wanted him to run in 2020 because they, you know, all the stuff that they were doing. No, 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 no. You want uh, Biden to be running because Biden has nothing to be running on right now except for a couple different things. The average family is getting destroyed. The average family is worried about the border. Here we have Jen Psaki and Rachel Maddow on MSNBC. Rob, if you got this clip, laughing, saying, did you guys see the Americans are worried about the border as if that's a real issue? What? Like, who are you to think, like, to you it's not an issue because you're living in a bordered building that's secure and you're thinking the American people are not worried about it? What an elitist you are to look at us and talk to us that way. Rob, I don't know if you have that clip. If you do, I play this clip here. Watch this here. I mean, if you look at some of these exit polls, I mean, I live in Virginia. Immigration was the number one issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, these could change in, in Virginia. Well, Virginia does have a border with West Virginia. <laughs> very, very contested area. Thinking, Build the wall. Like, what? Like, what? That's That's mind you, so Virginia, they're laughing, and just a couple of days before that, an 11-year-old girl was raped mm -hmm. and killed by an illegal in her Virginia, and it's not a problem. That's, that's ridiculous that she's saying something crazy like that. Yeah, but, but, it, but it's, it's condescending to Big not time. think that. So to mm -hmm. me, for the Republicans, I'm on Jesse Waters. He's asking me these questions about Biden. How did you think he's doing? He was on Seth Meyers. He's on this. I'm like, uh, awesome. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Keep going. This is good. You want him to be the candidate? Because 2024 is not 2020. It's a very different thing. 2020, there were people that hoped... Guys like yourself were hoping that Biden may be bringing peace to America and maybe the temperature is going to come down. The temperature went up. He didn't bring uh, uh, the temperature down. And this is a, you, didn't vote, you voted in 2020, the Dems and some of the independents in the middle, assuming he was going to bring it down. Now you have proof for three and a half years he was not capable of doing it. This is not going to be the same 2020 election cycle we're going to have in 20. My, my, my guess is it's going to be very different, and you want Biden as a candidate, not Newsom or Michelle Obama. Tom. You know, the American people are not dumb. I was looking for some surveys and some results, the American people speaking, about what they thought. They're the voters. They're the people. Let's see what they think. And so I didn't go to Fox. I didn't go to MSNBC. I didn't go to Drudge. I went to CNN. And CNN, this is last year. We'll start with last year. Last year, 34% said they had a positive reaction, very positive reaction, to the president's State of the Union address. By the way, that was the lowest since they started measuring it this way in 1998. Last night, came in this morning, 35%. I have faith in the American people. So this is back to back. This is CNN reporting. CNN this. reporting. There it is. Wow. Back to back. And they run the headline of uh, six and 10 state of the union viewers had a positive reaction to Biden's speech. No, no, no. You read down in that 35% said I was very positive last year. The lowest since 98, 34%. This year he's up to 35%. There it is. Got it. So 34, 35 so the American people are not fooled by the tone. They're looking for leadership and they're looking for specifics on how you're going to make the border better, how you're going to make their economy better. Let's not talk about the economy. Let's add two words to it, IR. Their economy is what matters. What matters is individuals' economy. Adam. Well, you, you started off talking about capitalism and taxes and all that. So for me, follow the money. Biden, you know, one of his loudest applause when he was talking about, you know, the corporations need to pay their fair share. I imposed a 15% minimum corporate tax and I want to bump it up to 21, right? I'm like, okay, got it. But I think it's, you know, you know, they bring a, you know, a handful of special guests. Uh, you know, they want to single out some case examples. And there's some Americans that, you know, uh, the one guy, college debt, now his kid can go to college, the one girl. But Two, the two people that stood out to me the most, the most, number one, was the guy Sean Fain, who was the uh, UAW union chief. We all remember that, right? So you're, you're unions, unions built the middle class, and the middle class, I want to build the middle out and the, the bottom up and not from the top down. Yeah, Sean Fain, this guy right here. Now, if you, if you haven't followed this story, we've all seen the Hollywood strikes and the auto worker strikes. Sean Fain was on MSNBC, on um, Kristen Welker's Meet the Press. And you know what he said about billionaires? Billionaires should not exist. 
So I said, hold on, guy. What's this guy all about? So like when you go deep down the rabbit hole, awesome, middle class, awesome unions, awesome, that's created America. Cool. Who doesn't want that? But when you go to their leader and he says things like, I don't want billionaires to exist, it gives me a little bit of pause. Capitalism. The second biggest thing, which Candace will probably Or Marxism to, is what he's talking about. Yeah, collectivism, Marxism, not a fan. And Biden, by the way, give him credit, he goes, I'm a capitalist. I want you guys to make money, Wall Street. You're not bad guys, but you know, I want the middle class. Did you know who was sitting next to Jill Biden? This isn't like near her. This isn't near, you know, the second husband, whatever that guy's deal is. Was the Swedish guy? Sweden? Was the newest member of NATO, yeah. Sweden's prime minister. Yeah. And for sure, they hugged, they embraced to just basically symbolize Ukraine, we're with you. NATO, we're with you. And that was a, that was a very symbolic moment. Candace, thoughts on uh, uh, when, uh, when, Biden was talking from stage, and he said, we're with Ukraine, and you saw Speaker Johnson kind of go like this. Because like, you got to realize, if you counted the number of times Kamala did squats, <laughs> 50 squats, her legs have a workout afterwards. Big time. Johnson, zero. Chicken legs afterwards. So did, did you guys notice that? He didn't stand up one time. I was worried about his legs. The, yeah. the so, plan. But, but the point is, he went like this, and he rarely went like this. So what did you think, you know, from a Johnson standpoint with his support for Ukraine? And Tucker's also a little bit concerned about it. What are your thoughts on that? I want to be very clear. If, if there's any way that I have adapted my own thought process over the years, it is just the full recognition that the American people have been sold out from both sides of the aisle, right? Yeah. They keep us warring with one another because it is a criminal enterprise at the top. And uh, black versus white, tall versus short, rich versus poor, and so you, you see that language, yes, that Marxist language. We just need to steal more. We haven't stolen enough. That's the reason why you're suffering at the pump. We just need to steal from the billionaires more, actually uh, relying again on economic ignorance because, of course, it is the billionaires who produce jobs that give people the opportunities. Um, they have their wealth because they're providing opportunities to more people that can you know, also have that economic growth throughout their lifetimes, that, that economic mobility is what we fight for in America. And so I understand it now. I understand it when I see people nodding. I understand what Eisenhower warned against with the military industrial complex. I understand why it is that the Pentagon just can't find the billions of dollars every time they do an accounting. Oopsies, we lost it because these are money laundering operations, okay? And it is your money that they are laundering, right? They never want these wars to end. It is so obvious. There's just no way. We can't take, can we take a five minute break from dropping bombs? Like a five, just like, can we get like five months of no drama? That, what was it, a week after? We left Afghanistan and left all of the weaponry. They then announced that we're locking up with Ukraine, you know, and, and, and money's going this way. It's, it's never ending. It's perpetual. And it's not because Ukraine is a, a democracy, a beacon of democracy. Don't believe me? Go read the New York Times about Zelensky and Ukraine uh, three years ago, what they were saying about the money and the corruption in that area. It's because he's a part of it. He's a part of their syndicate. The media wants to convince you that Zelensky is some good hero fighting for democracy because they know that you probably don't understand the politics in Ukraine, relying on our ignorance, the American people's ignorance, to think that if they keep saying we're spreading democracy, we're not spreading anything but your tax dollars, okay, to foreign countries so we can launder it back to the exact same people that sold you out in the first place. So it's a Republican and it's Democrat and it's cancerous. I think a lot of it is said. Um, I think the more that you guys recognize what the two-party dynamic is about, what it rewards and why, I don't see it in the same characterizations um, that you do, but I'm not in the position business. You know what I mean? I, I'm in the analysis uh, business of it, and I get why they applaud, and I get why you're concerned. And I, I get all these metrics. Um, one, you know, but I, I just, it's interesting. when you. It's all a function of your perspective. Uh, headlines are one of the worst things in the media. Uh, they've always been that way, by the way. The, the, the headline has always been deceptive. Nobody reads the piece. Uh, there's a formula when it comes to writing pieces where the, the counter is usually like five paragraphs down. Why? Because nobody's going to go five paragraphs down. But then they feel like they're being fair. That's why I very rarely talk to the media. 
That's ironic, right? Because I'm in it, right? But the media is not a monolith. I don't talk to them because I know what they're going to write because I do the same job. I know what the story is on me. I know how they're going to cover things. Okay. Ukraine. Johnson was nodding because his caucus wants to do the funding. So he's nodding because it reflects the position of his caucus. Uh, why do they want to fund Ukraine? I believe that there is a consensus among the leadership that they see Zelensky more as a change agent than as more of the same in Ukraine. Your history of Ukraine is right, and it's obvious. Ukraine has been a dirty place for a long time. It's a kleptocracy. Uh, he is perceived as somebody who's going to change that. Is he or is he not? Uh, I don't know. You'll get information on both sides. He has been a little distracted uh, from changing his country by the fact that he has an existential threat against it in the form of Russia. Um, are we spreading democracy? I don't even know anymore if democracy is really a suitable system for a lot of countries and cultures. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not saying democracy bad. I'm not saying that. It's certainly right for us here. I just don't know that that's what America should be in the business of doing. Do I understand why they do it? Yes. Do I think it's interesting? And do I have my own locked in frame that I can't get out of, which is what I see of a lot of people in politics? I do. I can't get away from my, my, I want to pick the right word, but I'll just go with this one, hate of the two party system. It used to be, I'm old, right? I remember when you couldn't find conservatives or Republicans who were against any foreign intervention. You could not find it. They used to call them uh, hawks, uh, that they were involved in wanting to fight everywhere all over the world in the interest of democracy. It was one of uh, Reagan's most uh, envied positions of strength, okay? Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall, you know? Yup, he's gonna do it because we're gonna come and beat your ass otherwise. Now, it's completely flipped. My father's Democratic Party, may he rest in peace, were all the Trump constituents. My father's Democratic Party was all the people. Now, he was not fighting for those people on the same bases that Trump was. Why? My pop was a different guy from a different time. Uh, one of the last jokes he told before he died, and he did have dementia, by the way, so I've seen it in real time, uh, and I understand people's concerns about what we're dealing with right now, was he read something about me and my ascendancy in the media and white privilege. And someone had to read it to my father. At the end of his life, he lost the ability to read, which was very sad for him. And he clapped his hands. He went, hot damn, we made it. Christopher's white <laughs> because he had been seen as an ethnic yeah. and he used to be described differently because of his ethnicity as a first generation Italian. The dark skinned, swarthy, mercurial Mario, mm. prone to fits of anger, mafiosi, mm. uh, gap toothed grin, uh, you know, dark circles under his eyes. This was all code. Right? This is all code for a brown dude. You know, that's the way they saw him. And he couldn't get hired and he had to share being valedictorian with an Irish guy. He had all these little things. But the parties used to be the opposite of what they are now. What does that tell you? It's a game. It's a game. And the analysis is right that you see it. And then the hard part is, well, what do, you, what do you do about it? And I do believe that, you know what, sometimes it's okay to recognize a problem, be angry about it. And look, I get and I respect and I appreciate where you're coming from. You have a level of frustration that you want recognized by the people who are in positions of forwarding those agendas. You want it, you want it recognized. I, I don't begrudge you that, I get it. I just think that nothing changes if nothing changes. And so what do you do about this two-party system and how it's locked in? Biden is saying tax the rich because it works for Democrats, okay? And it also is starting to get a little traction with what uh, Congressman Burchett, you guys know him from Tennessee? He's an interesting guy to watch, and I'll tell you why. Sure, he's messed up, he said some things he shouldn't have said, okay? And he was a little too cautious about apologizing because you get killed for apologizing these days. Uh, because again, politics isn't like the rest of life, where if you care about somebody in a relationship, you apologize when you mess up and they'll judge you on how you go forward. Doesn't work like that in politics or with the media, they'll kill you for apologizing. But Burchett says, 
You know why we can't get anything done? It's not my people. It's not even the Democrats. He says, it's the uniparty. And he says it like you'll know what he's talking about, which most people won't. What uniparty? He's talking about the corporate interests and the lobbyists that strong arm people on both sides of the aisle, as Candace Owens is saying. And he says it right out there, which is why a lot of people don't like him in politics. You have to do something about that. So now you have Bobby Kennedy Jr. in the race, okay? Whether you like that or you don't like that, you know, obviously that's your right. I have him on the show. I get crushed for having him on the show. Okay, why do I get crushed for having him on the show? Because you're gonna get Biden elected. Now early on they thought he may take Trump voters, that never made any sense. A guy named Kennedy, I don't care what he says about vaccines, eventually he's gonna read as a Democrat because he is a Democrat, right? So he's hurting Biden, you're gonna help Trump win. Here's my point, again, I'm old enough. Do you remember Ross Perot? Do you remember that election? Do you remember what happened within the ranks of the GOP after that election? Anybody? So you'd had 1994, right? The election that took my father out. He wasn't supposed to run for re-election. His numbers were in the tank. His personal favorability was high, but his job performance was low. The economy sucked and the dominant social issue at the time was death penalty. And my father would not shut up about the death penalty being wrong. He could not say it enough. And it was at 65% in his own state. And he wouldn't shut up about it, but that's who Pop was. He was about the politics of inconvenience. <laughs> you know, like he would constantly say things that would get him in, in trouble because he was a principal guy. They don't exist anymore. So the contract with America happens, okay? Getting people on board with their own interests wipes out the Democrats, wipes them out. My father loses to George Pataki, who goes on to have three terms himself after the mighty Mario, a guy who nobody knew gets three terms just like Mario did. Why? Because that's the two party game. That's the two-party game. It always balances out for them. And then that's then what that does to me, Chris. The more you're saying that, he, you said the difference between you and Candace and the rest of us is is perspective versus analysis, right? Okay, fine. No, no. First of all, with me and Candace, probably 40 IQ points on her part. You know, she's she's very smart. But it's that I'm not in the business of creating positions, justifying positions. Right. I am just more of a, a probative, probative animal do you, do you think of looking the, at positions. Do you think we're making the right decision, sending more and more money to Ukraine? You think that's the right move? You think we need to send the next 60 billion to them? The, the amount of money is always easy to reject. Here's the problem, and you would never do this in any of your businesses, and you get great people advice about this, even with the clothing thing that you did the other day, which mm -hmm. was really good. Mm -hmm. I actually did that in my closet. Uh, turns out I have horrible taste. Uh, but the, it's not about the m amount of money. The amount of money scares us when you hear the numbers because they're humongous, right? It's what are you doing with it and why are you doing it? That's the part. So with Ukraine, I understand the policy interests. I understand that you can agree with them or disagree with them. And you absolutely should and you should vote on that basis. But it's not the amount that matters to me. It's what do you expect to happen with that money and how much of it will actually go there? They do have a skim problem. We, we have a skim problem everywhere we give money, by the way. It's always Chris, that way. it's very simple. It's, uh, the skim problem is going to happen. I'm asking the skim's going to happen. Okay, so do you support them sending that $60 billion to Ukraine, the next $60 billion? Um, yes or no. Yeah, it's I, simple. I, I understand. I understand. No, uh, we want like. I know. I know yeah, you do. On. But here's. I got five more topics I want to go yeah. through. So I, I know. Wanna... But it, look, it, the reason I pause matters. No, okay? no, no, no. Yes or no. But here's the thing. How many? <laughs> but uh, look again. I love again, this guy. Again, but here's. But here's why. I wouldn't be here if I wanted to duck. Right. This is not a comfort zone. All right. Here's the point. Journalists should not be in the business of taking positions. OK, they shouldn't be because but if you want to do full transparency, do full transparency. OK, fine. And now every after I give this answer, people will say you'll never be fair to Ukraine again. No, I don't think they should give them the money. Why? No, don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. Don't clap. We're clapping because you, you it's gave not. Us yes but here's the thing. You shouldn't want journalists to say, hey, where are you on this issue? I'm, 
I'm telling you. No, you, you should. I actually disagree with this. I, I'm radically transformed on this. I am tired of people pretending that they don't have biases, okay? I actually want to know what you think and what you believe because trying to sell it to me as a neutral narrative, like I am very honest about my bi biases up front. I will tell people what I think. And that makes it much more honest for us to assess why it is you are telling us something in a certain way. It's the pretend, we're not biased but it's slippery, at CNN. But it's slippery because then people start trying MSNBC. to persuade you of their position. It's not, it's not persuading. It's this is what I think, and let me tell you what it. This is the reason why I think it. Okay. Now you can go and listen to what he thinks and why he thinks it, and you can right. compare. All right. Fine. I don't agree, like, but I'll play. I'll play neutral. it your way. The, I'll the play journalists it your are way. not neutral. No human being is neutral, meaning objective, meaning 50-50 on anything. Everybody's got feelings. It's about fairness. The standard is always fairness. Fairness is allowing both people to he allowing people to hear 100%. all the perspectives. That's it. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But. I think that there's a slippery slope when your journalists get into telling you why they think what they think. I think it should be about uh, the audience and the players and that and not them as much. But fine. Why do I say no? Not for your reasons. I say no because I believe we do not have the transparency and we do not have the efficiency in government of telling you why they're doing what they're doing and why it makes sense. Can I simplify? This is my reason why. I said why. no. Okay. That's pretty simple. I but get, but, but, you, but the but, why but your matters. Re your reasoning was, so number one is, I want to know where the money is going and how it's going to be spent. Yes. I want to know that as a capitalist 100%, but there's a reason for me above that. And it's actually a very simple reason, okay? Mm -hmm. Here's what it is. Say I'm your neighbor. And literally, where you live, I live right next to you. So mm -hmm. I'm a neighbor, okay? And I live in your community, okay? And I come to you and I say, hey, uh, Chris, man, I've, I'm getting robbed. This is the third time they stole the bikes from the kids. And I need $150,000 to build this fence so that stops happening. And I need another $50,000 to build this camera. Uh, brother, you know, if you can give me that $200,000, that would be fantastic. Now, your wife is coming to you and saying, babe, uh, we don't have a fence here, and not only did they take the four bikes that we have, they took the three fishing rods, and they broke into the two cars, and they stole the system out of the two cars. We have to build a fence Wait, hold here. On. They took the fishing rods? They did. They Kill all of them. That's it, right? <laughs> that, that's what we got to do. Right. So that's, why, that's how we have to the paint the picture. There we go. But hear me out. Let me, let me explain this to you. So imagine, like, your wife is saying this to you, okay? and says, babe, we need to spend $300,000 to build this wall and put up some cameras because this cannot happen, and we need to go and tell the community, put a, uh, security there so they watch this. We need to spend this money. And you say, no, <laughs> we have to take care of the neighbor's you border first. Oh, it gets better. But, but, then you turn to your wife and you say, you're a racist. You're a sexist. <laughs> yes, because you're a homophobe. It's Why do you want to take care of your children? <laughs> See, wife. that's the part for me where, you know, as much as, it, as, much as we talk analysis, for me, it's, hey, how much money do you want for Ukraine? $60 billion. No problem. The day you guys build the wall, let's have the conversation. That's go ahead it. and do it. You want to do this? Go ahead, let's do $20 billion. Put the account. Here's where it's going to go. Great. Hey, you want $60 billion? No problem. The day we get, you're finally doing your accounting and you're showing us exactly right. how the money's been. The day you want it, then you do it. And by the way, this works in companies. Guy comes up to me yesterday. I don't even know if he's in the room or not. He knows who he is. He's probably watching this from wherever he's at. He says, well, I think I can do this, 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 that. I said, really? Yeah. I said, fantastic. I'm glad you believe that. This is great. But tell me what's the biggest victory you've had since you've been here. I said, what are you talking about? I did this. I did that. I, I said, no, no. That's part of your job description why we pay you to do that. That's not above and beyond. That's your job description. You're supposed to do that. I said, tell me something you've done that you've gone above and beyond where everybody's going to say that's a victory. He says, well... Uh, I don't know. I said, no, it's called, you don't have any. I said, why don't you go do that, and I'm going to green lit the budget for you, and we can do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. You'll do that? Yes. Okay, go. Go. Go show me some results. We're going like this. I need some money. Let me look at your resume. You've been fired 92 times. For sure, here's money for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Let me see your resume. Well, we already spent and wasted $2.2 .2 trillion. What a great job wasting money. Here's another $60 billion for you. Just, to me, in no way does that make any sense, and nothing about what I said seems like I need analysis, and I, I, it's just logic, this doesn't make sense, the answer is no. Fix the border, fix America, fix our issues, then let's go fix Ukraine. Till then, Ukraine is not in my top 50 list of priorities in my life as an American. That, that's me. That's me. That's how I, I think, process it. I think, that there's, I think there's an argument for the priority to be higher, certainly among the leadership, but there's a fundamental flaw 
in the analysis that does matter, which is it's not a business. And if you have... It's the have, largest corporation in the world. But it doesn't get run as a business. It doesn't get run as a business. Not at all. I not agree. even close. I agree. They're, they're I agree. not even concerned with their capital requirements. There is no accountability. It's not even their money. It's not even their investors' money. They're playing with house money. That's why they never know the numbers. And the game has convinced you that it's not your money. So are they going to invest in Ukraine? Yes. Why? Because they think it's good for them. Because they think it's the right thing for them to do for them. That's why Johnson was doing this. And he lives by the good book, right? What about Hawaii? What, what about Hawaii? So everybody, so Hawaii goes through this horrible situation that we all watched on TV, right? The governor was on TV the other day. Did you see him? Nope. You know why? Because he was on News Nation. <laughs> That's why. And you guys are all watching Fox or whatever you're watching. So he came on again because people have forgotten him. This is America, right? This is, this is Hawaii, right? Um, and he says... You, you guys said that you'd be here for us. I can't get housing for any of my people because they're all short-term rentals and it's a vacation market and people are priced out and I'm having to pay this money and we're going broke and nobody will help us. He couldn't even get on TV. You see, that's the game. It's about where your efforts are concentrated in that moment. You know moment. what excites me about that, buddy? So he is going to, they're going to get their money Let because me. the Republicans and the Democrats think it's in their interest to give it. Here's what excites me about that, Sexy. I got to tell you this. I love the fact that cable's going to be dead in 10 years. Yeah. I love it. I love the fact that cable's going to be dead in 5 to 10 years. They got 5 to 10 years to figure this thing out. Okay? They're being saved by three things. Older community, okay, boomers, sports, and Big Pharma. That's it. Those three things. Mm -hmm. And one by one by one, when these things go away, cable's going to be poof, gone. Mm -hmm. And by the way, these guys, if, if, if we were to do a survey to see what they watch, most of these guys probably consume their content from podcasts and yeah. independent. How many guys consume your content from independent? So there is a waking up of people who are no longer like going to cable. They're like, let me see what Candace has got to say. Let me see what uh, Tim's got to say. Let me see what Tucker's got to say. Let me see what Joe's got to say. Let me see what Russell's got to say. Let me see what these guys got to say. And they're kind of like saying, dude, why doesn't the other guy say it? Because he can, because he's being funded by Big Pharma. And that's, I never thought about it that way before. Do these guys? No, nah, they're just getting it off of Patreon. No shit. Yeah, so they don't have to lie to me? No. That's kind of cool. And they're getting it AdSense and they're making money this way. That's the hard way of doing it. Yes. I'm going to listen to these guys. Chris, the game is changing dramatically where the wake-up call is coming so soon, and it's going to be freaking awesome. It's going to be so awesome, it's not even funny. But let me, let's go on the topic that we're talking about right now. Let's go on the topic that we're talking about right now, because I like this. So, since we're on it, establishment, not establishment okay? When you were on the first time or the second time, and the more and more you and I speak, I, keep, I, I, I would bring this up. Candace, I'm going to go to you first. And, and then from there, I'll come to Chris. One of the things I would tell you about is the establishment, non-establishment. It's like, who is the establishment? Who is the non-establishment? Who is this? Who is that? I'm like, the establishment is the same people that told us your brother was going to be the best president in the world because he was better than Trump in New York. And every day we watched him on the screen, and he would give PowerPoints. How many of you guys remember when he was on Andrew Cuomo? Every day for months, we'd watch him, and boom. We're like, you know what? I don't agree with his policies. I don't agree with what he does. I actually like the fact that he's got the audacity to talk to me on a daily basis. I respect it. Game. And Democrats said, here's the next guy. Behind closed doors, he's not a gamer. What do they do? Destroy him. Get rid of him. Get out of here. You're not listening to Chuck Schumer, Pelosi, all these guys. Establishment, you're out. Okay? Then we saw what happened with you. Then we saw what happened with now. They're thinking about letting go of Anderson Cooper, Jake Tapper, and uh, what is it, Chris Wallace. Who the hell do they have left after that? I don't know what's going to be happening over there. And I know you support them. You're supposed to. We don't have a lawsuit going on that's pending. You do, so we understand what, what positions you can and can't take. We're not going to impose. But for me, this concept of establishment versus non-establishment, the more and more and more I read into it, the more and more and more I study about it historically, how it's been done, the more it becomes evident that that exists and they have, they have a chokehold on so many of these guys that you're looking at their faces. He's not talking to me. He's talking on behalf of somebody else. Candace, 
How much of the concept of establishment and non-establishment do you give credibility to? 100% credibility to the idea that there's an establishment. And you know, you know it's the establishment when first and foremost they're all saying the exact same thing. Even in the face of overwhelming evidence, they don't break from the narrative, right? They just don't break from the absurd things that are coming out of their mouths. And they just keep pretending that it's real. And, and they're clearly lying. They know that we know that they're lying. They still keep lying, despite the fact that everybody knows that they're lying. And so you understand that they're taking money from somebody that controls what they can say. And I'm glad that you brought up big pharma. I mean, wh why do we have more big pharma lobbyists in DC than we have politicians? That makes no sense. Lobbying should be illegal. Right? If you're, you're buying out the politicians that we are electing and sending to D.C., that's what's happening. And, and you have the huge lobbies that are in D.C. APAC, huge lobby that's in D.C. Uh, Big Pharma, uh, Pfizer, they're, they're all in there buying out our politicians. And then you have the media, and I'm glad you brought up the fact that you know, they're telling you, you're all going to die, wear a mask, six feet social distance. It got almost medieval. I was like, next to me, be like, put leeches on your body. Uh, weird rituals, everyone walking around slowly. Don't ever forget to pause and remember COVID. Because that right there, honestly, if you wanna talk about a psychological analysis of the media and what they were doing using fear to compel people to accept things and how journalists were not speaking up on behalf of the people who were having their freedoms stripped, that was when you saw the establishment bare bones, condemning you for wanting to see your family members, right? Uh, keeping a ticker live, it made entirely no sense. CNN, a live ticker every five yeah. seconds. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. What are you contacting all the morgues and somehow you're getting live? And that was really an experiment with how much power the establishment had has that rules over you. And I think it's a huge contributor to the reason that we're seeing the collapse in the mainstream media because people are not gonna forget that. I, I think the vibes are different. The frequencies are different. The lies are just not hitting the same. The propaganda is not landing the same. The people have never been more alive and more awake and more disturbed by what we have allowed to rule over us over the last decades. And by the way, I want the takeaway to be here that you should be encouraged. You should wake up like I wake up every morning feeling optimistic about the future because we are watching the last squeals of a dying animal when it comes to the establishment. I'd like it to be true. Um, I'd like it to be true. When I got into the news business over 20 years ago, they said nightly news is dead. Still has the biggest audiences of any media. Um, 20 years ago they said that? Yeah, nightly news is dead. You, you remember that stuff, Tom, where they were like, it's over. The, Why are you the looking big, at Tom? The big <laughs> Tom's in his late he's a, 30s, he's 30, a number, 40s. Because he's a, he's a researcher. He's a researcher. Every time they take shots. I don't appreciate them That's coming up your age, Tom. Time. He's a researcher. I did not hear Abe Lincoln say that. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like it. Look, I'd like it to be true. I just see more players. I see the same game. And I think there are just more ways to get paid now with cottage industries of where you play to the fringe. Uh, the problem is, is that the fringe dominates the dialogue. You have what they call a magnified minority. You have the parties are ruled by it. You see it in the primary process. Uh, what is the antidote to that? Ranked choice voting, open primaries, uh, more parties, taking away the power from the parties. But none of these things really happen uh, in the way that they need to. Why? Because those are the people in control. Uh, my point about Bobby Kennedy, people are mad at him. He's gonna disrupt the race. Well, when Ross Perot did what he did, the GOP rethought things after that. And they started very much focusing on the state level and changing state legislatures and governorships so that they could have a hand in where the dynamic really begins, which is as close to the local level as you can get. So maybe if Bobby stays in the race and uh, the president loses and they blame it on Bobby, Okay, but maybe there'll be a lesson for the Democrats as there were for the Republicans after the Perot race uh, and that had Bill Clinton wind up beating Bush. May maybe they'll do the same kind of thing and rethink what they're about and where they're about. Uh, very often, bad events can be catalysts for positive events. I'm fine with the fact that, I mean, of course these guys are gonna raise their hands. They're here in your house. They have already recognized that there's another way for them to get information and perspective. Good for you. You are well ahead of the curve. You are well ahead of the curve. I don't know how long it takes, but I do believe that you're targeting the right thing. Is it new? 
No, but things move in cycles in our cultural dynamic. And establishment has always been a boogeyman, right? Sometimes uh, now it's manifest as deep state, you know, different things. But instead of establishment, non-establishment, I think it's establishment versus disruption. Being a disruptor is a commodity. Trump is a phenomenal disruptor. He understands the concept. And he understood early on, because a lot of people I'm sure were telling, in fact, I know we're telling him, I don't know, Donald, I don't, I don't know that you're gonna be able to position yourself as an outsider. I mean, you know, you kind of check every box of an insider. And he was like, it's all about how I think, and it's about what I say, and it's about what I connect with. And he was right. And there is good news in that. The, I, w I would love to wake up every morning optimistic. Um, but then I look in the mirror and I'm still me, and then I, I'm like, uh. But <laughs> I do believe, I do believe that the more people become wanting, become of the mindset of wanting things to be different, the better things will become. If it winds up changing the mode of media, great. I don't have the excuse of saying that I've ever had an advertiser control what I say. Um, I wish. Uh, I, don't, I have no excuse. Everything that I say and think is because that's what, I, I think I should say. I've never had an advertiser uh, pressure me. I haven't, I would love to tell you that. I, I would, look, I, I would love to say it was a function of group think at CNN and now I'm free of it. It's, it's just not true. Um, I, I would, is, is it true? Can there be group think? Can there be, yeah, I think you see that playing out. It just hasn't been my personal experience. The reason I went to News Nation is that the guy who owns it told me I will never have anything to do with what you say on television. Uh, if you perform, great. If you don't, not great. But how you do it is up to you. And Perry has kept that word. Uh, and I've never had that happen before. In fact, I would actually like more input uh, from the guys around me at News Nation, but they have a very strict understanding of why they're doing what they're doing, which they believe is an antidote to what they see in the rest of the media. So, so fine. So a couple things there on, Tom, do you have any thoughts on what Chris just said? Yeah, three of them really fast. I agree with Candace, there absolutely is an establishment and it absolutely is in lockstep and it's a uniparty and it's ripping us off from both sides. The, the second point is, is, I disagree, Chris, a little bit on something. CNN is not just a poorly run business, it is a dying sector. That's why they are laying off. That's why they are taking advantage of uh, talent controversies to change their operating budget by getting salaries off the, uh, off the rolls. And I believe in the citizen. My third point, I believe in the citizen. In San Francisco, on the special election, Proposition E and F passed, and maybe we didn't hear it all the way here in uh, South Florida. Proposition, this is very big. Proposition E is refund the police. As in, give them, what's a refund? You get your money back. Well, the police are being funded to do more policing and keep the people safe. Proposition E, pass. This is San Francisco, because the people had had enough. The voters had, the citizens. And then they passed Proposition F, that if you want welfare, piss in the cup and take a drug test, or you don't get your welfare. And so the citizens are striking back. And I and, believe in that. So and, I, I agree with Candace. I think, I think there's a shift. There's only 24 hours in a day. So people are not watching CNN. They're watching podcasts. There's only 24 hours in a day. That's where the ratings, the ratings are. And the people have had enough. That's why they're listening to podcasts. That's why they're passing Proposition ENF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Rob, do you have the chart that shows, uh, Brandon, I think you have this, that shows how much we consume with OTT, with YouTube, with cable, and how it's been declining over the last 10, 15, 20 years? And Chris, I know you're saying they said 20 years ago, late night news is a thing of a past and all this stuff. Evening that, news, yeah. Evening news, that's not what, what, what I'm saying. No, no, it's how we consume it in what platform. Yeah. Cable TV is a thing of the past. Cable is going away. And, 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 the, and the beautiful thing about capitalism is if I can sit here and watch a podcast right now going on, I can go on YouTube, I can go on Spotify, I can watch Joe, I can watch anybody I want here on the podcast, live, comment, do all that stuff. And, you know, the person's talking, and if they're doing a sponsorship with somebody, great, I like it, I don't like it, that gives me the edge. But this is the one, Rob, if you can pull this up, if you can pull this up on what happened with cable and what's been going on with it. This is, uh, 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 if you can pull up this chart, uh, uh, it shows 
Nielsen, the difference between broadcast, streaming, other, and cable, and what companies are increasing, what companies are decreasing. Uh, are you guys able to pull this up, Rob? See if you, everybody say the thank establishment you. Can you, can won't you let Rob you pull a it up. Shout out. Yeah. These guys do a great job yeah. here. Come on, Rob. Okay, check this out if you have it up. There you go. Zoom in a little bit. That's July of 22. The baby blue on the bottom left is 34.4%. It's cable, mm. okay? That's just a year prior to that. And if you look at streaming, 34.8. Other, 9.2. Broadcast, 21.6. And you don't see YouTube on the other side because it's dark. YouTube on that chart is 7.3%. Uh, now, if you go to the next chart, go to 20... Uh, uh, the other one that you have that goes to 2023, Rob, because you just showed 22. Do you have the 23 or no? You're putting a okay, lot of pressure this. on him, by the way. The Yo, 23. Rob. Watch what happened. Cable, just in one year, went from 34.4 to 29.6 mm. in one year. What's 5 on 34? 5 on 34 is 15%. Yeah. In one year, it dropped 15%. If you go back and look at this 10 years, it's a whole different story, but going back to the establishment, non-establishment side, you know, to, to think that does not exist today, I, I think it's a little bit naive for us to think it doesn't exist. And, and more we think that way, the more we'll be controlled. And... I, 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 think, I think there's a lot of that going on right now. We ought to stay skeptical on what decisions are being made behind closed doors. When I sit there and I think about two families, right? I think about Kennedy's and I think about uh, Trump, those two last names. They didn't like what Kennedy was going to do. And he was going after CIA. He was going after the Fed. We saw what they did to him, to his brother, to that entire family pretty much. Hey, what do you mean you're not? And then they're like, dude, you're a Democrat non-establishment, Lyndon Johnson, Democrat, establishment, do it. Less of you, boom, more of you. How wonderful and easy it is to deal with a Lyndon Johnson. Mm -hmm. You're annoying, Kennedys. Let's get rid of these guys. Trump versus take any of these big Republican last names right now. Who is this guy? Dude, you are super difficult to work with. You don't listen to anybody. Let's get these guys. Yeah, yeah, Nikki Haley. What a wonderful, <laughs> fantastic candidate she is, and what districts does she win? What states does she win? You ready? Vermont, Bernie Sanders, the only man wearing a mask in the State of the Union last night, <laughs> what? and D.C. DC. Okay? Those are the two places she wins. She's a Democrat. So they love that because she can't be controlled. They can't stand this guy because he can't be controlled. So th this is the part that if we sit here and we're, you know, we're kind of like massaging this and thinking it's not really happening, all of a sudden we can wake up five, ten years from now saying, hey, Holy moly, look what, what kind of control they got over us. Mm -hmm. I'm not, and, and this was coming from a guy that lived in Iran for 10 years, he escaped one in Germany a couple years, and finally made it here, and I'm naturally paranoid against that, and unfortunately, that's not going to get out of me. My son is sitting over there, Tico. Tico! He's 12 years old. Now, <laughs> he, he may be a different story because he's born here. Four kids born in three different states. How Don't sleep on your right? dad and your wife being over there. No, 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 no. My dad, I've been trying to challenge my dad to run for office. He keeps saying no, no, no. He has no interest right now at 81 years old. Anyways, let's go to the next He's topic. He's a little young. Yeah, he is. Let's go to the next topic. <laughs> border. Let's talk about the border. Let's talk about the border. Rob, can you do me a favor and play the clip if you could? So I don't know if you guys watched Tucker's, who watched Tucker's State of the Union uh, reaction last night, if you did. Yeah. Uh, by the way, shout out, shout out to him on Twitter. He had 1.5 million people watching his live on Twitter last night at 11 o'clock. 1.5 million people. That tells you uh, who has the power today with media. It's not cable anymore. It's independent content creators. But Tucker's talking about the State of the Union, and he shows one clip. And this is a clip, I believe, Rob, it's the Attorney General, Candace, please correct me if I'm not saying, I think it's the Attorney General from Alabama, Southern Alabama, that's thinking about, you know, what they think they need to be doing with, you know, the election. We'll go from the election, then we'll go to the border part. He's, you know, what they feel they need to be doing with elections. Have you seen this clip I, or I no? I think it's Merrick Garland speaking in Alabama. Is that the clip? Yeah, it's in okay. Alabama. Attorney General yeah. speaking in Alabama about what we need to do with voting. Watch this clip here. Go ahead, Rob. The right to vote is still under attack. <laughs> and that is why the Justice Department is fighting back. 
That is why one of the first things I did when I came into office was to double the size of the voting section of the Civil Rights Division. That is why we are challenging efforts by states and jurisdictions to implement discriminatory, burdensome, and unnecessary restrictions on access to the ballot, including those related to mail-in voting, the use of drop boxes, and voter ID requirements. That is why we are working to block the adoption of discriminatory redistricting plans that dilute the vote of black voters and other voters of color. <laughs> Ken, how do you, as, as, the, as the, according to Forbes, as the voice for the black conservatives. Yeah, speak for you all know, black can people. You please? I'm about to speak for black liberals too. No, actually this has been remarkable and something that I'm so happy and I'm gonna turn what he said into a positive because you know when I first started out, I got no love from black liberals. You know, they were very much still existing under the spell, as I call it, of the Democrats, not the Democrats, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was an avowed racist and said I'll have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. Uh, who essentially broke down the black family via the Great Society Act. It was Machiavellian, it was evil. You know, the government targeted black Americans and the result of that was black Americans and the next generation not being able to understand that every ill that has followed fatherless homes is, you know, high incarceration rate, everything that's happening. But anyways, there's been a remarkable shift this year. And I have a very large black audience. I'm finally getting some plays in black media. We're even calling it black media. It's owned by people, honestly, who I think hate black people. Um, but what I will say is that you are starting to see within these same communities that, that used to play well in that the citizens are standing up and saying, hey, these illegal immigrants are not good for us. It's harming us. And I, I've made this point for years. The first people that are going to suffer because of the influx of illegal, illegal migrants is going to be black Americans, obviously. It's going to be uh, the black Americans who are now seeing that the rot exists in their community. Uh, they are going to, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's black Americans that live in those impoverished cities, Latinos, black Americans that live in those impoverished cities that are getting these influx of migrants and seeing the, the, the spike of crime in those inner cities. And it's them that they're competing with. Uh, when you're talking about the welfare benefits, and by the way, I think welfare should be abolished, but I won't get into that. Uh, people aren't ready to have a discussion yet. But mm -hmm. the, the, these competition where people are saying we're going to give more handouts and more handouts to illegal migrants who are now getting debit cards, unchecked debit cards in New York City. Did you see this? This, this is miraculous. It's yeah. unbelievable. 53 yes. million. Yes, because they, they, they complained about the food that they were getting, so they wanted their own debit cards. And so I'm okay with that sort of rhetoric, as infuriating as it is, is because I think that it actually contributes to the awakening uh, that, we're, that we're seeing happening all across America, where you're telling people not to believe their own eyes, not to believe their own suffering, not to believe their own eyes when the gas pump and, and the groceries have gotten more expensive and you continue to lie to them. So we need Merrick Garland to forever be in front of a mic spewing lies and racial rhetoric because it isn't landing. And like I said, it will just contribute further to the awakening that's happening right now in America. I, I love how grateful you are for him, though. You know, that, yeah. that level of gratitude is, is incredible. I never want them censored. I always want to hand them a mic. Isn't because when, great? when you're getting to the point that we're so, you know, you're trying to sell to us now that men can be women, right? Let's just give it a mic. Let's give it a mic. I, I, if those are your true ideas, I want to sit down with you and have a discussion because people know stupid when they hear it. And it doesn't take long, by the way. It doesn't take long. When you long. give the mic, go. 30 minutes into, you're like, oh, you don't make a lot of sense on what you're saying. Right. Let, me, let me ask you this, Candace. Why do you think uh, liberals and the left have such lack of respect for the African-American vote where they don't believe African-Americans are capable of getting an ID or Hispanics, why do they think Hispanics and African Americans are not smart enough to go get an ID? Why do they look so down at those communities, minorities? They don't. They know that Black Americans are smart enough to get an ID. They just they they say these things to justify what they're actually trying to do, which is just to shatter the integrity of our elections, right? And so they insult Black Americans in in the process. They are, by the way, getting very good. If, if we want to talk about what they are doing, is making sure that Black Americans can't read. 70% illiteracy rates, these, you want to talk about prisons? The public school systems are becoming pr prison pipelines, right? And the reason why they want black Americans and all Americans illiterate, by the way, remove black Americans, the illiteracy rate uh, is 40%. 
right now nationwide which is why the Department of Education should be abolished. Because the Department of Education Thank you. is making people stupid intentionally. They want you to be stupid, they want you to be illiterate, because then whatever we tell you will be true, right? Whatever we tell you will have to be true because you can't go research and read and understand the history of our lies. And so it, it's, all, it's all a part of it. Um, so they know that black Americans are because they have systemically made black American students more stupid via their public education system, are more likely to be emotional. It is the oldest trick in the book, by the way, when you go back to slave codes in this country. What was that number one slave code? You could not teach a slave how to read. It was so crucial to maintaining the plantation that even if you were a white person and you were caught teaching a slave how to read, you were punished, right? And there's a reason for that. Because you have to be ignorant to maintain slavery. You need the slaves to be ignorant. And so don't discount that. Everyone should be paying attention to what's happening in the public schools. It, they want to make everybody ignorant so that we keep saying yes to this system of what it is is economic slavery, right? You are going to work every single day and they are taking your money to fulfill their imperialistic efforts overseas and laundering it through other corrupt countries and giving it back to themselves. We are right back again in America in a system of slavery. And it seems different because they've modernized it and they've updated it and they've got funny tech and they've got TikTok and Instagram and materialism to keep you distracted, but do not miss the point. And so, yeah, that's a very long-winded way for me to tell you that everything that's happening right now is by design. It is Machiavellian. It is evil. But fear not, people, because, as I say, I wake up every day skipping and singing and humming because they know they are losing power, and that is why they are getting more radical, more incensed, and more angry in their rhetoric. Yeah, I love that. You know, for me, absolutely. You know, I, I, I never liked it when our relatives looked at uh, us, the Bedavids, because my parents got a divorce and my dad worked at a 99 cent store and they would say, oh, hey, you know, oh, hey, you know, bono yo, oh, hey. And so, oh, get the, this oh, hey stuff away. I don't even want you to feel sorry for me. It's disgusting for a human being to want others to feel sorry for them. It's actually not a very attractive quality. It's a very unattractive quality. Sometimes we think we're still seven years old and mommy comes and says, would you like some soup and do this kind of stuff? And we feel like we want that. But, you know, it, it, while you're saying that, this guy has no clue I'm about to do this to him. He's going to love this because he's going to get God knows how many eyeballs here right now with his business. So voting, Chris, mm -hmm. you're very smart. We can fix this. Can you pull up the first stat real quick for me when it comes down to uh, uh, smartphones? If you can pull that up, Rob. Uh, 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 do you know which one I'm talking about? The Pew Research that you guys just sent me. Pull this one up. Check this out, folks. So smartphones. Zoom in a little bit. So let's first read at the top what it says. It says black and Hispanic adults in the U.S. are less likely than white adults to have a traditional computer or home broadband. Okay, fine. No problem. This is from 2021, two years ago. However, if you don't have home broadband or traditional computer, how many of us are, would agree that this is officially our new home broadband and computer? Yes or no? Yeah. Before, go, before I show you the stat, how many more whites do you think have access to smartphones than blacks and Hispanics? What's the percentage? If you were to say, Zero. what do you think the number is? 15% more, 3% more, 10% more, 20% more? What do you think it is? Whatever the margin of error is. All right, so can you pull this up, please? We might have please, more. Please pull this up. This is so interesting. This is Pew Research, smartphone, zoom in. Everybody. Okay, oh, first, first let's identify yeah. the, the dark uh, uh, blue is whites. The light blue is blacks, and the lightest blue is Hispanics. Hispanics have the same access to the smartphones as whites do, and blacks are only 2% less. Mm. This guy yesterday sends me this technology that he has, and he wants us to be part of his company. So I'm giving him free advertisement. You know, this would be a $100,000 sponsorship deal, but I'm going to show it to the world and see how many of you guys can see a technology like this being available to us today to vote. Rob, if you can play that clip... I sent this to Tom yesterday. The NFID. Watch this. The most disruptive and game-changing advancement ever witnessed in international and cross-border payment verification. Shockingly, nothing exists that allows individuals to prove account ownership when transacting online until now. NFID stands as a hyper-secure yet user-friendly tool that creates trust across all digital transactions and touch points. Once logged into an NFID profile by using multi-factor, biometric, and blockchain-backed verification, 
Anyone can simply copy and paste a crypto wallet address or bank account, including IBAN or SWIFT codes, and it allows us to instantly verify the rightful account owner. If the intended recipient also holds a KYC-approved NFID profile, we can definitely confirm that we are transacting with the rightful person or entity from anywhere in the world. International and cross-border payments are no longer based on blind trust and guesswork. If it's not verified by NFID, it's not worth the risk. Trust but verify. By the way, th this, this podcast Reagan. is not sponsored by these guys. He has no clue I'm showing this. I saw this and I'm wondering if Hispanics have access to smartphones as much as whites do, if blacks have access to smartphones as much as whites do by 2%, why, why, have, why do we have a hard time? Maybe we start voting with... Maybe not IDs. You come in with your ID, and I kind of show my face, and I go like this. And if we can do that, yep. Nope, this is not Patrick. This is not him. Yeah, okay, good. This is him. We can verify this. Why are we so worried about finding systems to verify? Let me give you data, and then I'm going to come to my friend here, Chris. Ready? So 16 out of 50 states in America do not require an ID to vote. Those 16 out of 50 states, Rob, if you can pull this up, those 16 out of 50 states have 212 of the electoral votes out of the 538. Let me say it again. The 16 out of 50 states, you have no need to go like this and walk in when you're voting to say, hey, can you please pull out your ID and do one of these things? Nope, you don't have to do it. They're not asking for your ID. They could care less about your ID. 212, now watch this. 11 out of 50 states don't require a photo ID. You can just give an ID, but no photo. Did you guys understand me so far? Those 11 out of 50 states that don't require a photo ID to vote have 69 electoral votes out of the 538. 69 plus 212, it's a sweep forever for the left. Mm -hmm. Just so you know this. This is not me telling you this. This is the government telling you mm -hmm. this, what our guidelines are by states today. And the rest... 23 out of 50 states, only 23, less than 50% of our states actually require to go like this. How pathetic is that, Chris, to have something like that? You don't have to be a left, right, or a center person to say that doesn't make sense. What are your thoughts on this, the way we're voting today? There's a lot that goes to it. Um, you know, you have half the representation of the U.S. government represents one-third of the population. Why? Uh, because of how we do it with the Senate uh, and redistricting rules and stuff like that. So there's a fundamental imbalance. Voter ID, here are the two arguments, and you can assess them how you want. Um, is it that, uh, I forget how it was explained earlier, but I, I don't know that it's that the government, whatever that means, if you want to ascribe it all to one group think, doesn't trust blacks or think minorities are capable of or whatever. But the argument is that Culturally, socioeconomically, as you go down in terms of the poverty level, as poverty becomes more important, there's less um, connection with government, there's less percentage of people who want to interface with government and who have identification. So the argument is, if you say you need an ID to vote, you will have an uh, unfair bias against those strata of society that don't tend to get IDs and don't want to deal with government. Okay, but I just have to... I'm just saying, I, no, that's no, no, the, that is, really, is the you, argument. You know, it's not an argument to lie, okay? Because but it, that it's is about, the argument. you don't get an ID because you want to engage with government. You get an ID because you want to drive. You get an ID because you're 19 right. and you, uh, or, I mean, you're 21 and you want to have your first drink. You get an ID because you quite literally need an ID to do so many things in That's society. That's true. So forget it. You wouldn't say that people that are in a lower socioeconomic class are never drinking, are never driving, are never doing all of the other things that are required, never seeing a movie, like, you know, that's above PG PG-16. You need an ID to do so much in life. So you're focusing, this is what, this is the lie. You're saying, well, they don't tend to vote. That might be true. That might definitely be true. No, they but don't tend to have ID. that's not why they're IDs. getting an ID. That's not why they're getting an ID. So they're, I, I, I understand. You're, they're, they're just lying. I understand. I don't think it's a lie. It could be wrong. It could be uh, a if false it's assumption. Wrong, it's a lie. If you keep saying it, if you're, it's no. wrong, you keep saying it, it becomes a lie, right? No, that's only There's if, no black people that are not getting their IDs. I, I came from again, a low socioeconomic background. 
I got my driver's license when I was 16 years old right. because I wanted to drive and I pick up it. my boyfriend. I, I get it. And, and those are the it, reasons people get IDs. I that get simple. It. I love you too. I get it. What I'm saying is two things can be true at once. The argument is exactly what I'm saying it is. Okay? The reason the big states don't have it is because of this argument that they, that they say that there is a disproportionate impact on people from lower socioeconomic rungs that do not get it. One, we do know for a fact that poor people uh, that live in more populated areas drive at a much lower rate than other people, so maybe they don't have the license. That's the argument. I'm not saying you have to value the argument. The other argument is, we need IDs for everything that we do, why would we do this? The argument now to your question, which is, uh, why don't we do it online? Okay, so I ran with this idea. Uh, like seven years ago, when we came out of the hanging Chad thing that allowed me to spend a great amount of my time in your state, uh, in Jacksonville specifically, about the hanging Chads, the 2000 election and all, I was like, wow, this is such a stupid system. Why don't we just do this the way everything in my life is on here? I pay my mortgage, my money doesn't exist. Right? I mean, I, I don't have, I'm not my grandparents. I don't have 50 Saverin cans, which was a, an instant coffee, in my basement that has my savings in it. Uh, I don't put money under my mattress. So I don't even know where it is. And I'm okay with that. But we can't vote. And I got crushed by all of these uh, security and intelligence people saying, oh, the fraud that would happen, the chance of fraud. And I said, but. We have like the easiest system to beat in the world. The stat they hit me with was the voter ID states do not have better rates or let's say lower rates of voter fraud than the states without ID. So it doesn't really make a difference. That is the fraud. <laughs> that is the, that is but I'm the... saying that, that's, that's what I'm saying. I ran with this. I believe in this. I believe that voting should be as easy and immediate as possible. I think that voting should not be one day. I think that voting, if it is going to be on that one day, that one day should be a vacation day for everybody in America so that they can go out and vote. I believe in early voting. I believe in online voting. I believe that we should have as many people voting as possible so we make it as easy as possible. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and you're not going to like it, but that's not my problem. It is not even this issue. It's not both sides of the aisle. The right, until voter ID, has consistently been against anything that would increase who votes. Okay, can I, and I think can, there can are I, reasons for that. But I am in favor of this. Can I ask you a, you a yes, yes or no? Yes or no. Ready? Can we play that game again? Yes. Did Should I get it right? Americans be required to have ID to vote? Chris, yes or no? <laughs> no. And I'll tell you why. Wow. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. The, until I see fraud rates that go along with the distinction, I don't believe that you make a simple pitch. Then my answer is no. And my answer is no because I don't believe wow. that you, I don't believe you want the government having even more control over who can vote and who can't. Okay, so I just, I, okay, okay. that's fine. I'm glad you're being honest. I just want to say, if you are a black or Hispanic American, please find somebody find me, the black or Hispanic American who does not work because you need an ID to get a WT form, get set up, they ask you for your ID, who does not vote, who does not drink, who does not drive or drive somebody else's car. This person does not exist. It does not travel. You can't get on a plane without it. it is, this person does not exist, okay? So it is the lie that they tell so that they can rig our elections by having a bunch of people who are not Americans coming in and voting. And but that where, is that. that is, where's and that, where's way, the proof that that happens? Everybody knows that, okay? How so, can you know so, so what you we've can, never been shown? Where is the fraud? Where are the that. fake the votes? The idea that any person will get up and say to you, that they do not believe that you should have an ID to vote. I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna characterize what you just said. But you, just, but you backed because, it up you know, by saying need, that we know that all these people vote we, who aren't supposed we, we to. Where's the proof of that? We obviously understand the voting rolls. There's dead people on the voting rolls. And this has been Every over. time they measure this with billions and billions of vote checks, and anybody here or Magic Rob, go up and find different for me on the internet. 
They Roger look Rob. and they see that the amount of fraud in elections is de minimis, okay, I, which I, is I, beyond a level of action. Well, this just, we just went through this. Okay, let me ask a question a different way. Let me ask. Let me let me hang on. Let me ask a question a different way. Let me ask a question a different way. Chris, here's a question. You and I run a nightclub. Yes. Okay, it's 21 and over. Need an ID. Why? Yeah. Um, because otherwise you can't tell whether they're over 21. And they're worried about the liability. What but about why you, you can't tell the whether proof. they're American? Show me proof. <laughs> Listen, Show I, me proof. I get the arguments. You're, yeah, no, I get that's what the not. Arguments this, are. this is, no, Chris, this, this to it's, me is more. Yes. No, it's, it's, it's common sense. It's for, for me to, okay. So you, why do you think that they don't do it again? Because you think, so you agree with Candace that the reason they don't require ID is because they want a lot of illegal votes and to manipulate yes. the no, system. I, a, a, a lot, right. a lot right. of... And uh, all the watchdogs from the right that follow this issue have just never been able to prove it? Uh, uh, well, you're racist if you uh, say uh, something. Of everything Candace said, of everything Candace said about IDs, was for me to be able to get a driver's license, for me to be able to get I a agree. Drink, for me to be able to do this, for me to be able to do that. I agree. For me, it's a different reason on why you need a driver. It's for me to know who the hell you are. It's very different. I totally get I'm it. I'm not interested in what, you know, all that stuff that I get to do selfishly because I need the ID to do that. No, no. When you came in here right now, we have friends we respect a lot and we respect our guests. Did you guys all come through a metal detective? Yes or no? Yeah. Do you know how many cops and sheriff are around here right now? You know how much we spend on security right now to make sure they're safe and nobody can come in here where you're safe as well? Now, we're doing our part. We invest the resources there. Sheriff is very good with us. Cops mm -hmm. are very good with us. But did you guys come in here? Did somebody walk you through, find out, verify, checking who you are, what you're doing? We have to do that. We got to go through that process. I totally and, get it. And, and by the way, this is not one millionth of as important as an election, okay? I agree. This is just a podcast I and agree. a conversation. So for us to I sit agree. there and, and say, you know, the idea isn't that important, brother, you're a, you're a very, very people from your community and others will hear what you have to say and they may go with that as well. In a country, a country without IDs and without being checked, you're not a country. You're not even a country club. You're not even a village. I don't even know what to call you, but you're definitely not a country. Again, again, we're a constitutional yeah. republic. That's right. You know, less than 5% of Americans get that. Republic. Republic. Well, but, 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 he said banana Chris, republic. It's also, yeah. it's not like they're hiding. When the board, when Biden comes right. in, opens the border, right. with Mayorkas the rat doing his, his dirty work, how many in the past three years have, we've had more illegals come into the country than children being Born. Okay. December of last year was more coming in yeah. than children being born. And this is where it's that, it's that window of, I, know, I understand that the proof, the proof is when they're coming in, they're wearing Biden shirts, Biden shirts and being told, <laughs> we're voting for him because they're telling us to. Then Biden just got, they admitted. Then they'll last be week, easy to catch. Yeah, well, but hold on though. Well, uh -huh. Yeah, th those four. But think about this. And then Biden, they admitted last week, he flew in secretly 320,000 illegals across the country, which to me, that's. That's treason. But it's brilliant, are raping. but it's brilliant from the Bru perspective of spread the votes, not just yep. in states you brilliant. already have control over. I, you got to spread them I other agree. states that you don't I have agree. control over. I agree, and then over. think about this, though. Yeah. Candace, you nailed it. And then if you say anything against them, it's you're racist. These, and mind you, and Nancy Pelosi was crying. She was also pissed off on MSNBC, or it might have been, yeah, MSNBC. And at the end, she goes, you know what really pissed me Rob, off about Rob, can you play Mike? that clip? You, uh, yeah, Rob, if you can. Magic Go ahead and Rob. say it until Magic he finds Rob. it. Magic um, Rob. I like that. She, she was Phenomenal fear. name, by the she way. She cried because Biden touched her heart, but then she was furious because he called them illegals. She said these are migrants and they're newcomers. It's obvious they're going to be voting. Yeah, let's let's watch yeah, Rob, this. Go ahead, Rob. That? Magic Rob. Now, you should have said undocumented, but I, that's not a big thing, Okay. Oh, what, what's the big thing yeah, about no, no, that? No, no, it's was, a big thing to Vinny. I, I actually wasn't even going to ask about that. I was just going to ask more about the moment. But you do think that he should have said undocumented? That wasn't going to be my question. Well, we usually say undocumented. Uh -huh. He said it. And, and, and let, let's just be honest. Because they are, and we all know this, they love power so much. They, they don't want to lose it. They're willing, all, look at all the fentanyl, 120,000 dead Americans mm. each year. All right, more than any war that we've uh, combined all these wars. Children sex trafficking. All these votes, it's such an open, just, it's a supply chain. And Chris, you nailed it. Is it cheating? Or is it that these are the rules, they don't have no voter ID in all these places, the left is just playing the better game. Is that what, that's what we talked about? I definitely, I definitely think there's a game. 
Uh, I definitely think uh, that language and blaming people for being bad if they don't agree is part of the game and really, really effective. It gets used against me on a regular basis. Um, I literally have a monitor of every day whether or not I'm seen as anti-Semitic because I had somebody on who's worried about Gaza or whether I am pro-Hamas and a terrorist because I'm talking about, you know, what's happening. I get it. This all works very, very well, okay? Um, Pelosi can make whatever point she wants about vocabulary. I don't have any problem not seeing everyone who enters the country illegally the same way. I, I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with the fact that it's not just some brown menace uh, that everybody's being told to be afraid of. You got Russians, you got Chinese, you got a lot of people coming from different countries now in illegally. This and is the main. In their best. This is the main. <laughs> this is the main. Well, or, or maybe, or maybe they are. It took 19 people to bring us to our knees for months yeah. in 2001. It doesn't take a lot of people who are motivated to madness to make a difference. But I'll tell you something. The truth is enough. Okay, there is no hidden program. The CBP app was wide open and you were told about it and you were told this was gonna happen, all right? And it was allowed to go through. They don't fly people in. They allow them to fly themselves in. Now, is that a difference? Yeah, because it's a little bit of a rhetorical difference. It's not Biden paying for the people to come in, but Correct. you are gonna pay for the hundreds of thousands of people who are in here now that weren't really verified because the system is broken. This is the most important domestic issue of this election. Immigration encompasses the economy, national security, and the number one killer in our country, which is the Chris, most ignored problem. can I ask problem. what you were saying when, uh, in 2016, when yeah. Trump people were saying, build that wall, build that yeah. wall. Were you saying it was the most important issue? Or Absolutely, and I was saying you, that, build, say that, that, that the wall, was... we are not a wall away from being safe. Why? Because if you go down to the border or you just pick up your phone, because all of us have access to the smartphone, and talk to people who do the job at the border, the first thing they ask you for is not physical barriers. Why? Because there's a lot of their problem that doesn't have to do with physical barriers. It has to do with rules. And the number, thing that, number one thing they've been asking me for 18 years to change are the asylum laws. Because there is no right to economic asylum. And that the reason less than 10% have successful asylum claims is because they are economic based and they've been begging for rule changes and they've been begging for resources to adjudicate. That's what they ask for most. And that's what was in this Senate bill. Was it imperfect? Yes. Uh, should we be able to do better? Yes. Should we be able to do comprehensive? No way. Stop asking for comprehensive border reform. It will never happen. So, Chris, out of these, let's say in these four years, sorry to cut you off, Adam, let's say once this administration is done, the four years, and let's just guess, because the numbers are not going to be accurate, right. 20 million are coming illegally. And we didn't make up the word, it's in the law, it's illegal. I don't have any problem with your language. Yeah, Knock yourself I love out. you, thank you. Um, out of that 20 million illegal mm -hmm. that were, come on in, come on, how many do you think are going to actually vote for the Democratic Party? I have no idea. So I have no idea, it, but I do know this. Say, can't is, have is it an safe idea to say there's, there's no, there's yeah, no is it idea. safe to say a third? I have no idea. But what I'm saying is if people come in and they vote illegally, you should be able to catch them. But, what, but some of the, the, law, the state laws don't show ID. If you don't need ID in all the states that he said already, the cheating, that's what I'm saying. The, the window is so open, you can't tell, but it's obvious what's happening. You know, you know well, what Chris, I'm saying? Chris, what are you doing, man? What are, you doing? what are you doing? You you know. Like I just I, I can't accept. You're not an unintelligent person, okay? That's a high you compliment. No, it is. It is. You are not. So I I, I need to just prod this further yes. because I know you're not unintelligent, okay? Thank you. I know that you backhanded, but I'll take it. No, I'm serious. Not I'm, I'm, unintelligent. I'm not, even, I'm not, is different than intelligent. Listen, well, go ahead. No, I'm I'm being serious because to go ahead. to take this position that you don't think we should have ID while acknowledging the influx of people at the border and pretending that you, there's some study that shows that there's not actually fraud. Every while also, study. While also acknowledging that you have no idea because you can't give them ID. You can't give them ID. How, how can you, if you're saying you can just go in and you can vote, right? And you're saying we know there was no fraud. It defies common sense, right? So what are you defending when you say something like, I do not believe that Americans should have to have ID. What are you actually defending and protecting? ID to vote. Um, I won 
do not believe that you're a government remedy away from the problem. Two, I respect the data, and they keep looking at this, keep trying to find that people are voting illegally. Who? Who specifically? What, what, what study? Who did the, the study The Heritage show? Foundation, the Cato Institute, places on the right, places on the left, the government. I mean, look, you can say, oh, they're all bought off by Big Pharma or whatever. I'm just saying they study this all the time trying to catch illegal voting. <clears throat> catch it. And if you catch it, then make the case. Look, you, you lock me into a yes, no. I say no because I'm not a fan of it as a remedy. I, I think there are policy arguments See, against it. I don't want it, it as a remedy. I want it as just a full stop rule look, that you should have to have do, an ID to vote. I'm not trying to fix it. That it can't, it's necessarily going to be broken if we do not have a system then, in which we know. But where is the proof that there's all this illegal voting? Well, but, but he, well hold on. If you, if, you, if you have to mail in your vote but don't show any ID or any proof, that's well, yeah, look. They can't, they can't, you can't that. ever catch When that you guy. go and vote, right? You go there. They open the book in front of you, right? They say, "Where do you live?" You have this little card that they've sent you, right? They see your address. You know, they say, if, if you if they see that you're me, they say, "Who are you voting for, Chris?" Which is really great. Um, and then they mark you off in the book. All right. So it's not that you just come in and you do it and you go. Do I think that's the best system? Of course not. Would it be better if you know who everybody is? Yeah, of course, from a safety and security standpoint, fine. Well, then why are you against it? Because two things, three things, really. One, I'm not a big fan of more government involvement in the lives of people. Two, Doesn't I don't know the proof. I, well, I'm just, look, I, look it's not again, more government. you don't have to, it is the government. It no, absolutely is the government. it's not more government because you already have an ID to do everything they, but else. But these people don't have IDs, and that's the point. If you said point. you have to get a, like, a, go out and get a special different from your that driver's be license ID, that would be asking Chris, for more you, government. Chris, are you trolling right now? I think he's sure. trolling me. Are you, honestly, no, no, me. if you are, if you're doing this, like, are you trolling or are you being uh, straight yeah, up right now? I can't look, believe this. Do I want you guys to play with your position a little bit? Yes. Uh, because I think that you just assume things that can get you into trouble. You are assuming that our system is broken and our elections don't work. That's what you're saying. That's you're what we're saying assuming. that the voting uh, numbers are wrong and that it is rife with fraud, yeah. right? And I'm saying none of you can prove that. Yeah. You just hung on it. You can insult me. Although, if you sign a little waiver that you won't sue and you do it to my face, <laughs> there'll be a different outcome. <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, look, I don't believe the system is broken and it's rife with fraud. And I will tell you something. I've been watching what's been happening very, very closely after the last election. And I have to tell you, it was upsetting how quiet so many people were who say they're concerned about the elections, that when Truth the Vote came forward, with their counsel under penalty of losing their licenses in court. And they said, we have no proof of any of the things that we have asserted mm -hmm. in open court. And nobody said anything. They just let it go. Okay. Why didn't that bother you? When everybody gets a mail-in ballot and you have video evidence of people dumping multiple ballots Why did that Truth the Vote say no, 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 we no, no, have no, no. no proof? No, no, no. Stop telling me not to believe my own eyes. It's an insult. It's an, it's, it, it is an insult. Why did they it, say listen, that? Listen, I don't, I don't care what True the Vote said. It is an mm. insult to the American people always to tell them not to believe their own eyes, okay? We saw the video evidence of people going with multiple bags and inserting, slowly just inserting more and more ballots that are in there. That's what happens when you mail out a ballot automatically, which is what something they want to do in perpetuity in California. I think they've already passed the law. In perpetuity, everyone who, even if you don't ask for it, you're just going to get a mail-in ballot. That allows people to then harbor those ballots and then to dump them off. You can have one person doing all of the votes, okay? And to vote multiple times. You have no idea if that individual ever received their ballot, first and foremost, or who is filling out that ballot on behalf of them. And when you see people on video that are actually doing these things, and then you say, we have no proof, you are, you are doing the thing that the mainstream media always does, which is the reason that the people are now disillusioned, right? They, they have no interest in the mainstream media anymore because they know that you use this terminology. We have no proof. We have no proof. We have no proof that it causes myocarditis. We have no proof that it's impacting. We have no proof that masks don't work, okay? You, you just have to stop doing it, Chris. Honestly. You, I don't like, see how any of those things go together. It, it, it's, and it's, it's the argument not you to just believe. Had all it's the this, argument wait, not on, to believe your on. own eyes Listen, constantly. you can say so you believe your, all you your own eyes, proof. but the people who gave you the video went into court could not prove it 
wound up showing that the videos don't mean what they were saying they meant that in open court where they that had the chance. True. The person who dropped and that I video that was coming out of, just as one example, Fulton County, uh, her name, is, uh, she goes by Jackie Daly, I believe is what she goes yes. by, at, down in Texas, and she is now suing them for the smears and the lies that they said about her because it was completely false. The video that she showed was 100% true, and she is suing. A, a ton of networks. As Just because she she's suing doesn't mean she's right. Well, if, and if she was wrong, they would have arrested her. No, they wouldn't necessarily have arrested her for saying that she thought she saw something. And there is litigation she going shared. on once we get past the drama of who gets yeah, to be so, the so prosecutor. Say, can can I help you out? No. Oh, no I'm, not the, <laughs> I'm enjoying this. She's so dishonest. I'm going to try to help you because I, I'm actually with my guy Vinny on this and I'm with the audience. And I'll tell you why. And I'm actually going to because um, you're scared of the mob. You think I'm scared? <laughs> Nobody gets more hate comments than this guy right here. And I, and I love it. They're messaging I right now. <laughs> I want all of it. Here's the deal. Okay, Prince. You, you said very poignantly, <clears throat> yeah, I, I try to tell my kids how to feel. Good luck with it. And then I try to tell my wife, and I, you know, what, you're trying to argue, argue policy-wise. Everyone here is looking at what's going on the border, and they're just like, no. I agree. No. You should be. I'm not buying this crap. You should These be, and you should vote on it. These people are coming in. They don't have IDs. We were told in 2020 that, you know, if you require ID, it's racist. I own a bar in South Beach, okay? Come on down, guys. Uh, <laughs> you got to be 21. You have to have an right. ID. If you want to fly, you need an ID. This whole ID is racist is BS. So these people feel this way because they're seeing what's going on. The, the old Candace, don't believe my lying eyes over here. Whatever the argument is, they're just like, nah, not buying it. But I have a question for Candace. Yes or no? My, I, love, I always here we give go. a yes Candace, or no. Yeah. My, I, my wallet got stolen recently, literally. Mm -hmm. And I currently don't have an ID. Mm -hmm. Literally. Can I vote? You're going to have to figure out how to, you have a passport? You got to figure that out. You know? I do have a passport. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If, if it happens so, but, but to I'm, be I'm that, saying if, like, if it happens you, to be, You said yeah. that Trump voters are not a yeah, monolith. Every, there's individuals. Correct. So, and if you go to those states, the 12 states or whatever that don't require ID, they're all blue yeah. states. So what, they're just yeah, going to be blue or blue. We have to govern blue. for the majority. There are also we states have, that have always, high population. So what would happen if someone I'm literally loses their yeah. ID oh, a few days Adam, before the election? Listen, I am telling you I'm right now. I'm just asking a question. We this make, is not helpful, wait, 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 by the way. We make, if your goal was to help me, this is why I said no. <laughs> the way well, thank that, you for yeah, your support, Adam. You have to make laws. Wait, well, what's Candace saying? Candace, yeah. Candace, what Go ahead, saying? Candace. Go to ahead. answer your question, right, you have to make laws that work to, to make sure that it satisfies the majority. We, we, do, we make rules, not exceptions, mm -hmm. right? If, if we were a country based on exceptions, there would, be, there would be no rules, right? If this is like when people are saying, well, what about in the circumstance, if this happens, then you slip and then you fall, and then this law exists, then, you know, it's not really my fault. It's like, okay, I get that there can be extenuating circumstances, right, yeah. as a rule, you have to have ID to vote. So if you're the person that on election day, you lost your ID, you can't find your passport, mm -hmm. it's snowing, you know, 30 inches of snow are on the ground, you and your wife got into fight, I'm really sorry to hear that, right? I really am. Yep. That's life. You're going to have to wait for next election. And maybe, maybe that'll inspire you to get a passport yeah. and have well, backup just, just to be clear, I said that IDs should be mandatory. Yeah, yeah. So no, that absolutely. Was the, oh, yeah, exactly. Maybe we cannot you should go to sleep to before midnight and not stay out as long yeah, as you Adam. do and not know where you are on any given night. PBD, maybe. it happened at dinner at 7 p.m., the early bird special in for Miami. Sure, <laughs> for sure, I believe you. 100%. Why does voting okay, I, have to be one day? It should be a national holiday. I do agree with Chris. I mean, at a minimum. And then you ask the question, well, why isn't it? Because we have lots of national holidays um, that maybe you don't have to have. Um, and I think it's because we're not a culture uh, politically that encourages people to participate. Chris, you lost me at no ID to vote. <laughs> I know I, I, I did. I, I, but, I know oh, I did. But, That's but, why I'm not in the position business. But, but, but no, no. But what I'm saying is like from the perspective of every decision I need to make, we need I get an it. ID, TSA, everything. I get and it. you're saying... The most important decision to be a president and sit across a guy like Putin, that you don't need an ID for that. I, and the audience gets <laughs> to make a, a decision for Wait, themselves. Hold on a second. Your argument is you need an ID to be president of the United States no, and sit you, across no, from no, Putin? To, to vote and decide Look, who gets to be that there's person. There's a reason and, that and the states that don't require it have the highest percentages of minority voters. 
uh, and minority citizens. Great strategy on the left. Yeah, because they're credit. mailing them ballots. The minorities aren't filling Great them out. Great strategy on the left. Yeah, they steal them. Yeah. I don't, have a, problem. I don't have a problem with mail-in ballots. I don't have a problem with more access. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. I think that you have better. I love the idea of that company that you had. I'd have no problem with that about recognition software. What's that the difference between people? that or ID? That's even more of an ID. That, that is an ID. Well, no, no. If, if it was something where you just automatically had access because you had the phone, that's great. Yeah, but, but if people don't have IDs Chris, and you're asking them to go get it, there is an argument to be made to that Yale they won't do Fordham. it. Fordham. Didn't you go to Yale and Fordham? What, you went yes. to schools, I have brother. IDs from both those places. <laughs> you do need them because it's what we do. <laughs> let me, let me kind of, this goes into another conversation I'm having right now that has to do with IDs. Okay. So China's social credit system, how much are you following that? Are you following pretty closely? Yeah. Okay, so, so let, let's kind of process with How many of you guys are familiar with the China social credit system? If you don't, let's kind of go through it together. So an estimated 80% of the provinces, regions, and cities have some sort of this social credit system. More than 33 million businesses in China have to follow this system. Now, you may say, what does this look like? There's such things in America that we have a FICA score, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax. These guys take you to a whole different level. Let me unpack that for you. For ind individuals, it's got data collection, scoring ratings, uh, rewards, and punishments. And for business, they have their own things as well. Here's for individuals, if you have a bad score, what you don't qualify for. You ready? Bad driving and traffic offenses. Okay. Uh, jaywalking. Mm. Smoking on trains. Okay. Not cleaning up after your dog. Oh, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> Not having your dog on a leash. I, I wouldn't get any kind of that. Okay. Not, pay, jail. not paying debts. Not paying taxes. Playing too many video games. A lot of people would be in trouble there. This next one, guys, earmuffs, oh, earmuffs, earmuffs, watching pornography, okay, <laughs> making frivolous purchases, consuming what? too much alcohol or junk food, criticizing the government, criticizing the social credit system, visiting unauthorized websites, being friends with or messaging others with low scores or those who commit the above offenses. Mm -hmm. Your score goes lower, okay? So now let me give you a couple testimonies on how this happened. So one of them is, according to the National Public Credit Information Center, Chinese courts have banned would-be travelers, these are people that wanted to travel, from buying flights 17 and a half million times by 2018. We're not even talking today. That's six years ago, okay? And citizens placed on blacklists for social credit offenses have prevented, were prevented from buying train tickets five and a half million times. Okay, there's a story of a lawyer, Lee uh, Jolin, a lawyer who was deemed untrustworthy mm. after not fulfilling a court order in 2015, was placed on the list and was unable to purchase a plane ticket home while on a work trip, Human Rights Watch reported. He couldn't also apply for credit card. So this is the social credit system. And I said, come on, they would never do this in America. Let me kind of give you an idea where they're testing this and how it's looking. Australia, for sure, Germany, India. Other areas, they're testing this out. Canada, we know what they did with the truckers. In U.S., Fed, this was a report. Fed monitor bank records for guns and Bible purchases. Words like MAGA and Trump. Customers are calling for a boycott of Bank of America after a report that the bank handed over the account information of hundreds of innocent people in connection with the January 6th riots. At the request of the FBI, the country's second largest bank allegedly snooped through information of anyone making certain yes. purchases in and around Washington before and after the riots and handed over information of 211 people. This was a report from the guys show you were just on Tucker Carlson. And some are saying, well, listen, I'm worried about this potentially coming down here. Now, the great news is that's never going to come here because, you know, Chris doesn't like IDs. Mm -hmm. yep. So we don't have to worry about something like that here because <laughs> it's just not going to happen here. Candace, concern about this. And by the way, Jordan Peterson was at Congress yesterday, I believe. Rob, if you have that clip, if you can just play it real quick, and then, Candace, I'll come to you for a reaction. I don't think people understand the degree to which they are profiled online and to which their virtual representation is now an iconic representation of them, nor do they understand that they have no rights whatsoever to that representation. So, for example, let's say we turn our information about our purchasing habits over to the bank when we open a bank account. 30 years ago, that wasn't such a big problem. With AI systems, it's a problem that's so big you can't imagine it. I mean, I'm certain that 
I, my staff could find the data online to absolutely predict your voting patterns mm -hmm. with 95% accuracy. You have no idea what sort of digital footprint that you're, you're leaving behind you. And there are almost no protections for that. And so, now, the, and you also asked about the First Amendment. Yes. Well, we have very weak free speech protections in Canada. And I can tell you that is not going well. And so the combination right here, yeah. in my country, the combination of that... Candice, uh, uh, your thoughts on this social credit system and potentially coming down here? Down here. It's, it's already here. It's, it's very slowly. The, the, they tried to radically introduce it during the times of COVID. If you want to go back to one of their lies, the, the dollar bills have the... You can get dollar from dollar bills. We have Everything has to now be electronic. Don't use cash. One way that you can fight this system that is definitely coming is to use cash as much as possible. I keep cash on me now. Oh, am I going to get robbed? This wasn't smart. This yeah, is, don't. This is secure, right? Yes. Um, We're good. And, and <laughs> at the time of COVID, I was, I was also pregnant. And when we went to the doctor, suddenly they didn't want you to fill out forms. So they got a bunch of people to agree to migrate all of their stuff online, their health information online. I refused. I was like, print out paper. I, I, like, little things like this make a difference. Read the small print. Speaking of doctors, I went to the dermatologist the other day. Read the small print, the fine print, on what you are agreeing to. Everyone just fills that out really quickly. Unbelievable. I, was, I literally sat there, and she's like, I've never seen anybody read it. Right? I read it, and I was like, I absolutely agree to none of this, so I can't sign this. Are you still going to be able to check my face because I don't want to go into some system? Mm. We can use this information. To do, we can share this information with the government to put into their systems. For check a pimple? Like, it, just one Hello. pimple? Like, I really, I don't want to do that. So you have to be, especially where they're already doing this, and he is absolutely correct, Dr. Jordan Peterson, in, in saying that the threat of that, of them just constantly being able mm -hmm. to take this data for you, to follow your digital footprint online, this is why it's really important to have, like, a VPN server. I mean, I, I put myself in all different countries all the time because I'm very aware that they're, that they're doing this. And you will see, ironically, that the same people that are telling you that they do not want people to have IDs are going to be the same people that are advocating for this system. They are. They're the exact same people. Who would say such a thing, though, to, have, to not have IDs? Like, yeah, I mean, no, this is great. We should, we should be able to do this and, and monitor. They want to they know where you are every second of every they day. They already do, though. And predict the your idea patterns. that this hasn't happened already, a VPN doesn't insulate you. I don't know how much IT you do. VPN is not going to keep you away from this. We've talked about this. You've all had this conversation where you're talking to somebody on some digital media and all of a sudden you start getting ads that are relevant to the conversation you were having. Um, why? Because they're monitoring what you're saying, which is why uh, I thought it was such a sham that you had the heads of the platforms come down and say, yeah, we don't really know what to do in terms of content moderation and stuff. Um, you know, you say we, we go for the majority with our rules, mm -hmm. not the minority. That's not always true. We pass a lot of laws to protect minorities. We passed a law to give all of the platform providers complete insulation from any litigation about what's on no, their no, no, sites. No, no, no. I said that in a functioning government, we should be passing ah, laws that protect in a the functioning I, government. I'm aware that But we, sometimes you've got to protect the little guys, no question. But we spend a lot of time protecting the big guy. They can't be sued for anything on, that's on their site, okay, content-wise. Mm -hmm. I, do I like that rule? No, I understand it. They're not exactly publishers, but I think they're closer to publishers than uh, we're giving them credit for. But they are using all of our information for their own needs and benefits. Candace is right to read her thing. Uh, and every time they say we've updated our terms and conditions, you got to click this to keep on yep. existing. You click that shit. You know, you click it because you want to keep going. And they are selling it. They're using it. The cookie preferences, all these things. It's already happening. Uh, the China thing is scary, right? Uh, could it happen here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Because the more we get into silos and we punish conversation like this and we punish positions and we punish thoughts, the more you're asking for it. And the more that you will allow fringe minorities to wind up overtaking the overall dynamics. And you see it in your government already. You see your elected representatives reflect the interests of motivated minorities more than they do the majority. So much so that now the largest voting bloc in this country is people who say they don't want to be Democrat or Republican. It's the first time in our history. So is there hope for Candace to get up in the morning and dance around? Yes, because more of you than ever before don't want to be part of the game anymore. But that doesn't mean the game's over. And in terms of this, it's happening every day in all kinds of ways. And they definitely know who you're going to vote for. You didn't need Jordan Peterson to tell us that. They know. They bank on it. Literally. They literally take it to 
the bank, the sophistication that you get when you sit down with um, get out the vote analysts and pros and the technical data of how you shape messaging online, they pinpoint millions of people that will respond to certain messaging certain ways. So the question is, what do we do about it? Because it's already happening. This is Tom, why, your thoughts on here. Yeah, this is why Bitcoin has been very popular. Not because, oh, it's a rebel currency, but also because it's aligned with the blockchain. And the blockchain not only gives you certainty of certain transactions, it also gives you confidentiality. Why do you think governments don't like blockchain? Because it gives citizens unique confidentiality in certain regards. It, however, that same blockchain could ensure complete integrity of elections which is also why both sides of the Uniparty don't want it, because they're both in a war to kind of game it from two sides of the street. And I, I think what's happening in China is the dark side. Anything that's good could be used for bad. And from the very, very beginning, if you knew the origins uh, of Facebook, you know, he referred to people who were so dumb to be allowing the information to be there. The founders of Facebook referred to, oh, they are so dumb just to put everything here. Because if you're getting something for free, you're not the customer, you're the product. Mm -hmm. And you're being sold to the advertiser, mm -hmm. um, when you think of it that way. And what's happening in China is the dark side of all this coming to light, where the pendulum will go back and forth. You'll have you know, conservative side of the Uniparty in power, and they'll want to use the information on the entire populace this way. Then everybody will get upset, and the liberal will get elected, and then the liberals will want to use it this way on the people. And it's horrifying what's happening. And so you, I, I want as small of a digital footprint as I can have in terms of my personal information, but it's getting harder and harder to do it. Why isn't the rule that everybody in the country gets given an identification. Why isn't it, instead of putting it on the individual to go and get the ID, why don't you reverse it and have it where when the baby's born, uh, that kid is given an ID and obviously you, you update the photo. You get a social security number, right? But I'm saying uh, if what we want is this type of transparency mechanism, why not reverse the onus and instead of it being on the individual to go and get an, an ID or whatever it is, why isn't it on the government and have it be automatic? Why isn't it that way? Maybe I don't understand what you're asking because I think we're, we're doing an element of it with Social Security when we've had four kids, California, Texas. But there's no picture on that. Okay, so you're saying right off the bat to do what? To get... Well, why well, not? By the way, I actually like it because see if I'm kind of reading into it. If I'm going a little bit too much with ayahuasca community, bring me back, okay? <laughs> Is your concern that you want to figure out a way for the left to get newborn babies to vote? Because that's brilliant, bro. If that's <laughs> reduce, like what you're going, to reduce salute, the voting age. dog. I mean, that's like... <laughs> reduce uh -huh, the voting uh -huh. age. Uh -huh. where he's going. Yeah. Reduce the voting age to eight months. <laughs> <laughs> Let's transition to the next topic. That was plenty here. I, I watched a video uh, just this morning, by the way. So I brought this video into Rob this morning. I watched this African-American lady talking about abortion. And it just popped up on my phone. I'm like, what a way she explained an ex-boyfriend of hers she had that was a rich guy. And she explained abortion in a way that's fascinating. Rob, if you can play this clip, I want to get everyone's reaction on this. Because is there a part of the government forcing people to need the government so they do what they need them to do to control that voting block? I don't know. But hear her argument here. Go ahead. They don't got abortion clinics at the border. They, they're telling us as American women, specifically black American women, we need to abort our children. But if you coming across the border with your baby, oh, come to the land of milk and honey, the great land of opportunity. We'll take care of you. Joe Biden even said, I'll give illegal immigrants coming across the border $400,000 a piece. Can you imagine if they were to go to that black single mother living in the hood, not even $400,000, offer 4000 because I know some black women that can make something jump with 4000 Offer her 40000 You know why they'll never give us that? Because they know that we'll never need them again. Welfare reminds me of, of an old man I used to date. I was in a relationship with him for 11 years. He would never marry me, right? But whenever my bills were due, I would tell him he would give me just enough. Wow. He had a whole lot of money. He would give me just enough. Rent due. 
twelve hundred dollars, he give me twelve hundred dollars, not one cent over, because he knew that every month the rent was due that I would have to come back to him. He wouldn't give me a hundred thousand dollars and say, "Here, baby, bump that, go buy you a house and start you a business," because then he felt like I wouldn't need him. The government system is the same way when it comes to Black Americans. They'll never give us enough to get over and get up. It's only enough to make sure we continue to come back every thirty days so that we can remain slaves to their system. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thoughts. Thoughts. It's a fact. I mean, trillions of dollars spent on the welfare system. Black Americans are poorer today than when it was established. Here's another fact. In the 1950s, under Jim Crow laws, black Americans were outpacing white Americans in terms of economic growth. It's during Jim Crow, before they even said Civil Rights Act, now you get your equal rights. Lyndon Baines Johnson, as I said, factually, the reason why they don't want people to know their history or learn history or be able to read books is because when you have those capabilities, you recognize how absolutely sinister and how avowedly racist Lyndon Baines Johnson was. Don't believe me? Check his record in the Senate, right? Every time there was a measure to help black Americans, he voted against it uh, virulently. And so you have that, they create this system, and the system literally says we will give you more money if you don't marry the father of your children to break down the black family. You fast forward today, you, you look at the circumstance in black America, how black Americans are suffering and how they can't attribute it back to the very same people. They actually go say, we need more governance in order to fix this, right? Because you have these things like BLM that pop up that are sponsored by the government that convince black Americans to riot and to loot down their own neighborhoods and to set them backwards even further. And they are completely deluded in believing that it's the white man that is causing these issues when it has always been the government that has caused these issues. And abortion is an infuriating topic, again, not knowing history, seeing women parrot things like, my body, my choice, and not knowing where that literal birth control propaganda and abortion propaganda came from. Well, you should read Margaret Sanger's writings. Oh. She wrote a piece called Birth Control Propaganda. She was another avowed racist and avowed eugenicist, not just towards black Americans, because at that time, Italians were coming in, Germans were coming in. I think I saw on your Wikipedia, your grandpa came in in 1890. They hated them too. Uh, they were racist toward them too. And her thing was, when she wrote this to Dr. Clarence Gamble, Dr. Clarence Gamble of the Proctor and Gamble family, a rich kid who inherited a million dollars just for being born in the right family, who was also concerned about immigrants and black people procreating. She wrote in a letter, you can go look it up. We don't want word to get out that we want to sterilize the black race. So how do we package to them? She said, we can make an appeal to their ministers. We can go to their churches and tell them to sell this sort of a thing. And so it's infuriating. I, I, I look forward to the day when we can stand outside of a Planned Parenthood clinic and it will be a Holocaust museum for the black people that have been murdered systematically, intentionally mm -hmm. by racists. Uh, Rob, can you, can you pull up that chart of 1964, what Lyndon Johnson did? If you can zoom in on this a little bit. So this is... It's not showing the top. This is showing the growth of unwed childbearing in the U.S. from 1929 to 2013. And this is from the U.S. Government Census Bureau. If you look at what it was back in the early, from 1930 to 1960, we're at around 4%, okay, is where we, are. we were at. Lyndon Johnson comes in, war on poverty begins. We go all the way up to 41% today in America at a time where the world average is around 7% and China and India are at 4 and 3% and we're sitting at 41%. It's a travesty what some of these bad policies did to this incredible community. So Chris, why do you think, uh, uh, you know, Stephen A. Smith, you and I uh, uh, and Stephen A. are friends and, you know, uh, we'll be in some group, te group text and, you know, you guys, um, um, you know, we'll have our conversations together, but Stephen A., gets up there and he challenges what's going on and I, you know, remind him of one time when he said, you know, I think what the Democrats need to do is they need to not vote Democrat and vote Republican for one time and see what happens, right? It's easy to say that, but then it's actually go through it, right? And God knows today's a very hard time for a guy like it's that. It's also to, not easy to say it, not even for a black man. Very, very to hard say to say it. Yeah. And he got a lot of heat he for it. And he still continues to get heat. When he had his first guest, I think he had on his podcast yeah. was Hannity. You were the second one that he had on the podcast, mm -hmm. right? And, and he's in sports culture, so he has influence in a very different sure. way, right? Well, why do you think, uh, you know, 
the, the data we're looking at, why do you think this lady who's telling the story that she's saying, why do you think if she is giving her perspective and then Candace is talking about the history, why do you think this keeps happening over and over again, specifically with the black vote? Because it works. It works, works for the system. It works for the people in power. It works for them to continue uh, to keep voting blocks dependent on them. You know, look, one of the good things is, you know, 10 years ago, maybe, I don't know, eight, we would have never seen that video. Uh, the, the access of people to be able to tell their stories now and put out information and perspective. I mean, is there risk with it? Yeah, you know, you can get sold things. People can lie and all that, but seem really impressive. But there's an upside also. Um, look, why did China come up with its social credit system? Uh, because power loves to shape behavior. Power loves to shape behavior. P power loves to create conformity. And that's why it's establishment versus di disruption right now in America, because we're dealing with it here as well. One, here's, I know very few things for sure. I know that the system has failed us of the two-party system. I know it's the root of these problems. I know it is. I also know that we are doing ourselves a massive disservice by getting away from conversation. One of the reasons that this matters to me and that I am happy to be here with Candace and with Patrick and with the home team fellas and with you guys. We are killing ourselves by denying ourselves conversation. Stephen A. Smith getting beat up as a black man for saying things that aren't popular on the left. First of all, is just nuts, right? I mean, it's, the guy can't say what he wants to say about people like him without getting beat up by a bunch of white people who all of a sudden are gonna say that they're covering the mantle. And now I say this, I sit here next to her, and now all of a sudden people are gonna make a big list of assumptions about everything that I'm about. Shame on you. I think that we're killing ourselves with this. Part of the answer has to be what you've been trying to do so much, Pat. And it's why I wanted to get to know you, and it's why the more I get to know you, the more I love you, is you gotta let people say how they feel. And when it's not making sense to you, you check it. There's nothing wrong with that. We do that in our real lives all the time. But when it comes to politics, all of a sudden, you don't just disagree with me. It's not that you're in favor of voter ID. I'm not in favor of voter ID. Um, and therefore, I am evil and hate Jesus and uh, <laughs> should go directly to the fifth circle of hell. Um, wh who does this benefit? See, they, you want to talk conspiracy, said whatever. Here's mine. OK, one, I believe that there's a conspiracy afoot that keeps tuna from biting my bait uh, because other people catch. <laughs> I don't catch. I think it's dirty. Second, who is benefiting from this? Who is benefiting from if Candace and I don't disagree? She's got to be bad. This is a bad person right here. Carl Tucker's favorite world. He doesn't mean it this way, I think. By the way, I'll get beat up for saying that. But. He uses the word evil a lot. Whenever he says that he doesn't agree with a position, he'll be like, oh, I don't know why uh, Biden is saying this. He is evil for saying this. That's just his default mechanism. But Tucker yet sat down with me. I don't know if you heard, we sat down. Tucker and I have the same lawyer. <laughs> so <laughs> when uh, Tucker lost his job, my lawyer said to me, who's a beautiful guy, I won't say his name because then people will hate him for no reason. Um, that he's like, hey, uh, would you call Tucker Carlson and talk to him about how he's processing all this stuff that's going on with him because you went uh, through it? And I was like, ah, oh, no, man, I, I really don't want to call Tucker Carlson. He chewed on my behind like it was a dog toy for years. <laughs> and I wound up calling him because why not? You, you don't want to try to, if you can't help somebody, you don't do it. And I became ashamed of myself that that was my reflex because of what I think about the guy's politics and a little bit because he was kicking my butt gratuitously on a regular basis. But that shouldn't be demonized. Why is my phone literally hot right now from all the comments as word spreads that I'm having a conversation with Tucker Carlson? Why are all these people killing me for sitting down with the guy? Why? Who is that benefiting? Why is it that if Candace comes on my show, there'll be hell to pay? Then the crazier question is, why do I keep doing it? Why I don't get paid to be controversial. I don't have a following, okay? I don't have a, it's easy, much easier to pick a side. You wanna be a star in the media, pick a side. 
Pick a side. And if I were you, I would pick the right, because you guys are much more loyal to your side <laughs> than, than the left is. Uh, be a star, be telegenic, make good arguments, do a little bit of homework, pick a side. Who's benefiting from that? I really think you gotta start asking yourselves that question, yeah. because we demonize disagreement. One of the reasons that this has been so cool is that you realize that you may not agree, but it doesn't mean that you hate. And they're making us hate one another. Even in Biden's tone last night, okay? And again, they all took this low bar idea from me, by the way. I'm the one who said it this morning. That you set Biden up for success. Whether or not he has a stroke is the new measure of the American president. Um, that's pathetic. That's pathetic. Tom's right in his analysis of what he didn't deliver last night. But we're going to hear about that all weekend. But why would he? <laughs> but why would he deliver any of those things? His tone. Why is the left happy about Biden this morning? One, because he didn't have his stroke, right? Yeah. Two, he was aggressive. He's got fight. He was taking it to Trump. What is this UFC? Is Tomorrow. that what we want? Tomorrow. Is that what you want? Is for to see. Who's the angriest? Who's the meanest? Who does that benefit? Start asking yourself the question of who benefits from keeping you divided. Because this is the answer. Not hitting myself in the mic, which I'm sure you enjoy. <laughs> this is the conversation is the answer. They don't want you to have conversations. And you should ask yourself why. Candace, final thoughts. Final thoughts. I think, you know, first and foremost, I also use the word evil because I, but I do separate. I think there are people that, you know, blindly support evil and their hearts are in the right place. Then I think there are people that are aware of the evil and they continue to support it because they feel, you know, it, it figuratively butters their bread. They're getting paid for it in some regard. They're being lobbied for it in some regard. And then there are the people who are plotting at the top, the criminal enterprise that is running this country. Um, and I would love to see a chart, by the way, when you show how poor Americans are getting. I'd like to see how rich the politicians are getting, right? Because like, mm. they're just getting richer it's and richer. Model. You see their yeah. account that it's tracks their model. stock trades? Yeah. yeah. I have a buddy who's been trading on those trades as an aggregate. He's up 16%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They do pretty good. Chris, be careful yeah. saying that. You may get canceled. The establishment may come Again? after you specifically. How just many times can you be canceled? You just offended Nancy Pelosi. That's very and, and offensive. Pat, really Please watch your language. Go ahead, Vinny. And Pat, if, if I may, because Chris, and you Trying to protect this guy. They don't have to check his ID. Go ahead. You were saying. You said it, Chris. These conversations need to happen. And I love, and that's why everybody loves uh, PBD. But on you, Chris, I think people, they have to give you credit for literally coming into a lion's den and being the person you are and having that conversation so you practice what you preach and I respect the shit yeah, out of you for doing it. My man. Seriously. All right. So, by the way, I just got a report right now. Uh, this was the number one biggest stream that took place on YouTube right now, record breaking, and on all streams going on. So, Let's phenomenal go. for everybody watching. A couple other things I want to announce to you guys. We love doing this live. Chris and I, we've been going back and forth. And we have finally come to an agreement that we'll be working together. We'll be representing Chris. Chris will be coming on more podcasts. So we're going to be fighting, arguing a lot more often. And there's a partnership now moving forward. Of course, everything he's doing with cable is with News Nation, even to the point where I have a News Nation t-shirt that <laughs> was brought to me here from our friend uh, Chris. But I have it over here. But you're going to see a lot more of uh, uh, Chris here with us. Um, uh, we're talking to a lot of people. I like to talk to people I disagree with. Maybe it's a... Uh, uh, a challenge that I have. I like debates. Everything to me is a debate. When we're having conversations, we're always fighting. And, uh, and then it always ends with uh, uh, brotherly love, which I, I love that part of it. And our initial conversation was about the fact that I loved how his relationship was with his son, uh, with his brother, that they were protective of each other. I got my oldest son sitting over there, and my, my other son is uh, at the house. I value that a 